NathanIvy.com Mr. Ivy know the show must go on If far Cincinnati, man, I put on Tunes made another flame beat for me to cook on Raised arms, close fish, yeah, too strong Team N.I., chop it up at the chop shop Top notch with the king flow, the hot shot Cop squats it, listen to the real Jumping like hopscotch, nobody harder than Oh, no, think not Not only citywide but nationwide, superlative, keep it locked like them Haitian guys. Put the truth in the airways, we talk about it. Brand new like the tip plates, let's be about it. Who got the info by the AM? Hey, John O'B the rapper, got them jamming when they play him. Staying in my lane, they ain't gotta okay him. Who the host with the scoop? Yeah, they gon' say him. Ivy, so superlative like a bag of drippos. So you wear the princess, Cincinnati red tag. One time with my people at. Team and I, where my people at? It's the 513, yeah, you know the flow. What's the word, Nate? Let them know the show. One time, where my people at? Team and I, where my people at? My people at? trying to become more diverse. Microsoft released a report that showed small... Good morning, everyone. Thank you for waiting. Appreciate you. Good morning. It's a beautiful Wednesday. I'm Nathan Ivey, back from my hiatus. Politicking on the latest. It's usual. Good morning, everybody. Wake up, world. It's after eight. Let's get it. 
Uh, shout out to the early risers. People didn't know, man, if you're trying to get ahead or make something happen, you have to extend your day. You got to get up early. When the competition is sleeping, you doing your P. Diddy thing. Good morning. It's hump day. Wednesday, November 13th, 2019. Go ahead and mark it. This show will be available as a podcast immediately following the show. You can check it out. Today, I want to talk about numerous things. I want to talk about Byron Allen, his Supreme Court case. I want to talk about impeachment, Donald Trump. Yeah, I want to talk about who who voted on John Legend to be the sexiest man alive. Who did that? Oh, okay, I see. Mm-hmm. And a smattering of other topics. Some local, some cultural, some national in between. Now, you got a couple of options. You can take a free ride on my thoughts for the next two hours, sit back and be edutained, or you might want to engage. If you want to share your thoughts, like call into the show, which is uh, possible, you can do so at 513-873-7134. All right. You can also leave comments on Facebook, uh, on my page, on Nathan Ivy Show page. Shout out to the friends. What's up, friends? Friends who like the Nathan Ivy Show. Good morning. We have a lot to talk about. So what happens if Byron Allen loses his case? What happens if Byron Allen loses his Supreme Court case? What is at stake? I want to answer that question and give you some thoughts. What happens if he loses? I also want to talk about how impeachment could backfire on the Democrats. I mean, think this logically through. How does this really end? I'm down with the public political drama, though. I'm down with that. I'm down with the public drama. Anything that's like, you know, can expose the the Trump crime family, I'm all for it. That's right, the Trump crime family. Uh, I'm all for it, but where does this really end, really? Think about that. How does this all end? People was going hard last night on Twitter about this John Legend thing. John Legend is... uh, well, you know, he's a fan, he's a friend of Democrat policies. I know he's come to Cincinnati. I think he came for AFTAB or he came for some reason within the last couple of years. I see him, you know, doing that whole political thing and speaking out. He's married to a woman named Chrissy Teigen, I believe. No reason why you should know who she is or even John Legend for that matter. And of course, John Legend is not his real name. It's his stage name, but it's a cool stage name. All right. John Legend. And he's got a great voice. He's got a great voice. John Legend has a great voice. No matter what people say, there's people out there that hate on him and they got problems and all this kind of stuff. But the the reality is that John Legend is pretty dope. He's pretty dope. Kind of. Maybe not. Okay, I take it back. But uh, he was named the sexiest man alive (laughs) by People Magazine. They're still around? People Magazine is still around? Didn't even realize it. People still watching that and reading that? I guess so. I mean, yeah, everybody knows People Magazine because you go to the grocery store sitting right there and they have these salacious headlines. They got all the juice before the internet. Stay woke, people. Stay woke because, you know, there's a real urgency to Byron Allen's Supreme Court case against Comcast. And Comcast, Comcast resistance, right, their legal resistance to it has now brought the Civil Rights Act of 1866 into play. And of course, stick around. I'll break that down for you this morning if you need it. The Chabas are smart people. Historic is what they're calling it. This Supreme Court case between Byron Allen and Comcast. And everybody knows, man, all the listeners know, I I, I believe in the power of independent media and black media. I do it. (laughs) From day one. You know what I'm saying? I'm not new to this. You know, I understand the power of it. I I used to work for a black-owned, you know, talk entity, okay? So I understand it. That's why I big up people like, you know, Roland Martin and others, whoever is doing their thing, because every it's the reason why I talk about how we have to, we how black people need to be intelligent about all issues. You know, that's, that's one thing. See, 
I've gotten criticisms from members of the audience and other folks, well, primarily members of the audience, for some of my stances. You know, talking about intersectionality. And when I see that, what I see is just people that just don't see it. For me, it's very clear. It's very clear. So sometimes you hear me talking about the weather. Black people should be talking about the weather. We don't talk about the weather patterns and how it impacts our communities enough. I don't hear nobody talking about it except me. I don't hear anybody talking about it. But when the, when the weather system takes a shift because of climate change or whatever you want to call it, it's going to hit neighborhoods where black people live first. What do you think happened at Hurricane Katrina? But a lot of black people sleep on that. We are not here. I am not. I am not. Uh, I'm getting a message here. Hold on. Sorry about a potential. Uh... Oh, okay, cool. I'm gonna check that out. Thank you for that. You know, in, in, including, you know, when you hear me talking about uh, net neutrality, that, that, that is an, that is an issue of class and race because all of the new and emerging media that's out there is on the internet and we can sit back and act like, Oh, well, you know what? I'll just pay more. People just don't understand it. Listen to me break this down for you, okay, over the next coming days and weeks and months and years. These are issues that impact our community. (laughs) Trust me on this, 100%. The future of the Internet is the future of black media. They are intertwined. There's no way whatever happens to the Internet will affect all of the black media entities because primarily they are on the Internet. What's happening with Facebook matters. It matters to our community. It matters to people who understand that you have to support and we need independent voices, black voices, new black media. That's why, that's why you hear me spend time and talk about it. People ridicule me. Oh, Nate, why are you talking about it? Because that shit matters to us. That's why. You just don't see it. So sit back and let me paint a picture for you this morning. Because we need to stay woke on these issues. If you want to share your thoughts, 513-873-7134. You can always chill. Just turn me on while you're doing whatever you do. Check out the flows. Good morning to you. We need to talk about this some more. This will be a big topic. It should be a big topic all day long. You know, people in the media should be talking about this and breaking this down and, and educating their various audiences on this. Yeah. I'm going to answer the question for you here, but I mean, what happens if Byron Allen loses? What happens if Byron Allen loses his Supreme Court case against Comcast? What do you mean? What's the basics on this? Well, the basics on this is that Byron Allen is alleging the Comcast and Charter Communications basically racially discriminated against him because of the content and the nature, the nature of his content. And the, the the nature of the ownership of his media group, which is basically he's the majority. Okay. Byron Allen. And I mean, again, that's a that's a great story with Byron Allen. I again I rem, I'm old enough to remember Byron Allen being on television late at night. And I thought it was good content. I mean, Byron out there was doing the whole like YouTube shit way before celebrity, way before the internet. And he built his product up. To where it is now. Now he is what's called a media mogul. He owns the Grio. He owns, which is a website. He owns, uh, he's the owner of Entertainment Studios, which owns and controls the now Weather Channel. Just to underscore a point I made earlier about black people needing to pay attention to the changing weather patterns, Byron Allen, after he bought the Weather Channel, he's going to do a presidential like forum in which they talk about how the, the weather. And the changing weather patterns are going to impact black and brown communities. People need to get hit. There's a lot of issues out there that, that, that impact our communities. Not just one or two. There's a lot of issues going on. Yeah. So basically, here's what would happen if Byron Allen loses his case. And this is just what legal experts are, are projecting and interpreting and things like that. Their interpretations of it. And what what I'm reading is that many believe that Comcast's interpretation of the Civil Rights Act of 1866 
would require plaintiffs to prove discrimination was 100 percent of the reason they were denied business or contracts in a nutshell. Now, what's the impact of that? What's the impact of that? Well, I think the best person to break this down is Byron Allen. So I put together uh, several audio clips that he's done in the last year or so from different interviews as he talks about it. I mean, who who better? I can't break it down better than Byron Allen can. So we'll listen to Byron Allen this morning and uh, he will educate us all on what's going on. But that's my quick and easy interpretation of it. Now, you may have a different interpretation and or you may have read something differently. Please share. So, of course, multiple ways to interact with the show. You can always join the chop shop. The Chop Shop is a chat room, essentially. How do you get access to it? Well, you get access to it by when you hit the play button. doesn't matter whether you're on the Spreaker app. If you're on the Spreaker app, it's really easy. Um, but it doesn't really matter. If you go to NathanIvy.com or let's say you pick up the show on you're a subscriber, uh, you just look for, it says uh, messages or it doesn't say chat. It says messages. And... Um, you can join there. It's very simple. And uh, you're always welcome. It says info. I'm sorry. It says live chat. It says live chat. So you can just join the live chat. And uh, it's very simple. Uh, the people here are super intelligent. And um, they do get, y- yes, it, can, it depends on what you say when you come in. It depends. Like any other new scenario is how you present yourself. But you are welcome. I got your back. I got your back. We do have some some gatekeepers, but, you know, it just comes with the territory. You know what I'm saying? It's, we'll call it a baptism. You may have to go through a little bit of a, a baptism trial phase, uh, but it'll be all good. It'll be all good. Thank you, Jesse. Thank you, Dorothy's page. I appreciate the likes. Uh, please take a second and share today's show within your own network or wherever on your page. Never underestimate the power of your social media page. Please take a moment. I really appreciate it. Appreciate you. Sorry about that. I didn't mean to do that in your ear. Pardon you. Uh, How many people checked out the clip of the Cutting Through the BS podcast? How many people heard that? If you have not heard that, go over to Send Digital Media on Facebook and take a listen. Tell us what you think. Pam writes, good morning, Nate and the Choppers. Sharp writes, beautiful Monday. Matter of fact, he said, beautiful morning. Miss Tiffany writes, hi. Hey, good morning, everybody. Glad that you are here. I'm talking about Byron Allen. And matter of fact, we're going to be listening to Byron Allen. He's done some great interviews in which he kind of broke it all down. I, I can't explain it better than he can. So why try I also want to talk about the Trump impeachment. I mean, this could backfire on the Democrats. How does it backfire? The same way the Mueller investigation kind of backfired on the Democrats. That's how. You know what I'm saying? If they don't get their man, if Trump isn't impeached, no matter what dirty laundry comes out, what difference is it going to make to his base? None. You know, I think, I think, you know, I think there's some people out there. And again, I've talked with some folks within the last, I say last three or four days who've expressed this opinion that they think that once the dirt comes out on Trump, that some of these Republican senators might turn on him. I don't see it. I don't care what they find on Trump. It doesn't matter. I don't care what comes out about his taxes. They don't care. (laughs) People don't understand it. It's about who's in power and who's not in power. It's not about who you like. It's not about who you think has the best policies. It's about who is in power. Trump is in power. And he's got a very powerful position within the Republican Party. So let's say we 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 flash forward to 2020, the Senate vote, they vote to not impeach him. What does Trump do? He runs a victory lap. I told you. Oh, this was just like that phony uh, Mueller report. Told you. The phony Russian hoax. Phony impeachment, fake news, his audience is going to eat it up. They're going to eat it up. And, you know, this is a game that Trump plays all the time. Trump don't care about going to court. And You think Trump really gives a damn about the Supreme Court and what they might say? No, 
He don't care. It's inconsequential to him. The worst thing you could ever do to Trump is take his money, and that's not going to happen. Trump don't give a damn about being president like that. He's not afraid of the Supreme Court. That None of that means anything to Trump. Just think about all the... Trump survived a video that came out of him saying that as a celebrity, he feels entitled to walk up to women and grab them by the genitals. And people still elected him. Within a year... Two of his girlfriends came out saying that they had consensual relations with with him while he was married. They rolled with him. What makes you think that the Republican Party is going to give up their powerful chip having their man in the White House just because he tried to do a quid pro quo with the Ukraine? They don't give a damn about that. Who cares? You know, it just seems like a game. I just do not believe that Trump is sitting around. You know, he's doing what he do, but this is what he does. He did this in the New York media. This is Trump. This is what Trump likes. He likes the chaos. He likes that. He likes the back and forth in the media. It fits into his wheelhouse. It's what he does. I don't know. This could backfire. This could backfire. Uh, Mason Marlowe's in the house. Good morning to you. Muzon writes, good morning. CJ writes, morning all. Fame writes, good morning, Nate. What have I been saying for two years about Colin Kaepernick? Tre- uh, question mark. If he wanted to play, he'd work out. Now Nike told him it's over. He want to work out. F-O-H. Uh, out of here. I got you on that. Yeah, Colin Kaepernick is doing a workout with the NFL. And I, why? I mean, for me, that's great for him personally. But I don't look at this as a win. There's going to be people like, yeah. Colin won. He got a job back in the NFL. He didn't win shit. Excuse me. He doesn't. That, that's not a win for the community. That's not a win. I'm not even sure what a win is. Everybody's running around. Colin Kaepernick. You know, he had one of the uh, one of the uh, children of I think it was like Martin Luther King Jr. the third or something like that or the fourth. Uh, anyone. Anyway. He led some chapter of the NAACP and they're going to boycott the NFL until Colin Kaepernick gets a job again. And I'm thinking, that's your end goal? Who cares about that? That's the most ridiculous end goal ever. I don't give a damn about Colin Kaepernick getting a job back in the NFL. I mean, the damage is done. You know what I'm saying? The, 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 the races have been exposed. That's not going to make the NFL less of a white male dominated racist institution. It just means that Colin's back on the plantation again. Shout out to William Roden, man, who was so correct 10, 15 years ago. Wrote a book called $40 Million Slaves. I interviewed the brother a couple times. He was 100% spot on. People was hating him, couldn't understand it. How are you going to be a slave and you got $3 million? It's a figure of speech in terms of an interpretation of the, the power dynamics between the ownership and the players. That's what it is. It's not a literal, like you're like in actual chains, but some sometimes the most unbreakable chains are the ones that are invisible, right? It's a different type of power dynamic going on. That's what they meant. Now people understand it. He was right. People tried to ridicule that brother when he put that book out. Well, it's the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. How are you going to be a slave? You make a $10 million a year. Just quit. You don't understand, do you? Simple humans just don't understand. They just don't understand. So y'all saw that. Who cares about Nike uh, and Colin Kaepernick getting back into the league? I mean, my only thing is that I thought he was a pretty decent quarterback and maybe he could have went to the Bengals or something like that. But, I mean, other than that, the damage is done. You can't put the genie back into the bottle now. The the NFL has been exposed. So Colin gets his job back. Okay, great. He never should have been blackballed. But it's almost like Muhammad Ali. You know, Muhammad Ali was robbed of something as an athlete that you can never get back. And that's your prime athletic years. The NFL can never, well, they did compensate him for blackballing him, so maybe they did compensate him for it. But in terms of an athlete in the NFL, the younger, the better. And that's what happened to Muhammad Ali. He he was robbed in his prime, you know what I'm saying, from getting out there and making that money. Uh, Brian writes, morning. Tanika writes, good morning, Nate and the Choppers. It is beautiful outside. No complaining about the weather here, man. It is beautiful. Very cold. But that's what the heat is for. Come on now. The choppers, the choppers are living good. Y'all living y'all best life. You got a car, and I'm sure your car has heat. 
You're living your best life now. I'm sure you've got heat inside your home. You're living your best life. So it'll be okay. I love it. You can break out the leathers, break out the boots. You know what I'm saying? Real men have some kind of facial hair at this point. If you don't have no facial hair and weather like this, uh, I'm questioning your testosterone levels. I am. I am questioning your testosterone levels. Real men have hair on their faces <laughs> this time of year. You know what I'm saying? Keep that chin warm. Tanika Rice, good morning, Nate and the Choppers. Shout out to Pam. Shout out to Pam. You out there, Pam? Good morning to you. Kelly writes a good morning. CG Dubs in the house. Uh, she writes good morning, Choppers. Brian writes the big 40 in days. What? Really? Join the club. Come on in, man. Mesa Marla writes big 40 question mark. I remember those days, LOL, 12 years ago. You know, it is what it is, man. What did LeBron say? He said he uh, he ages like wine. Gets better. Ray writes Grand Risings All. Hey, good to see you, Ray. Good to see everybody. Uh, Bunky writes, what's up, Nate and the Choppers? Good morning to you. Tracy's in the house. She writes, hi. How's that situation work with you, Tracy? I haven't heard you bring it up or anything. Sounds like maybe things are cool. Jace writes, Jace writes, what's the deal, Cincinnati people? Hey, good morning to you, Jace. Fame writes, Mazone, very simple. Ain't nobody care about Colum K. That's why he working out on a Saturday. No coaches will be there. Also, let me know if he kneels before the workout. <laughs> um, CG Dub writes, Nate, can you look into getting a financial podcast? Question mark. Hashtag money moves. Well, I'm very interested in doing a financial podcast. I was actually in a conversation with a brother, uh, a local entrepreneur, you know, maybe about a year or so ago. It just hasn't sort of materialized. And he has showed a real interest in doing a podcast like that. I'm trying to think. There's a brother named uh, there's a brother named Lawrence Kane. Shout out to brother Lawrence Kane. I know he does a financial podcast, and he's a locally based brother. Um, trying to think here. I mean, I, I can't think of any others. I'm sure there are some out there. I'm talking about like stuff like I think in like the greater Cincinnati area. I'm sure there are. I just can't think of them. But I, I like that idea. If you got some ideas as to who might host something like that, let me know. Let me know. Drop Rice Muzone, have you ever seen this type of NFL private workout for a QB that hasn't been in the leagues for over four years? Oh, boy. Pamela Rice, but Nathan, many, many tons of older folks don't listen to news on the Internet. They still want their TV. Um, yes, but let me see. Let me go right here. I haven't even looked at those kind of numbers in a while. Cause uh, you know, you know, I look at those kind of numbers to determine trends and things like that. Um, let me see here. Let me look up something since you said that real quick. Because the last time I looked at these numbers, which I admit was a little bit of a while ago, in terms of the trends, like the percentage of people who in surveys respond saying that they get their news on the internet, in in my in my research. What I found, what I, what's out there, is that that number is increasing a, among all age groups and among older black people as well. More and more people are turning to the internet for their news. And it's not that they're necessarily turning off the TV, but they're definitely turning on the internet. And I haven't looked at those numbers in at least a, a little bit of a while now. So, I mean, not years and years or anything like that, but maybe earlier in the year, this year I was looking at that. So I hear what you're saying, but the internet is where it's at. The internet is the future. We all know it. More and more content is going on the internet. Uh, and every all the numbers suggest that. More and more people are going on Facebook to get their news. They're going on social media to see what's going on. And um, they're, they're getting their information on their phone. That's just what's happening. It's a tremendous world we live in. I love it. And again, if you're old enough, you remember pre-internet. It seems like the damn, it seems like prehistoric times now looking back. But it's amazing how no matter what era you're in, you always kind of feel like you're on the cutting edge of whatever technology there is. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it was funny. 
Over the weekend, my wife and I were watching a movie called Love Jones, and I didn't get a chance to watch a lot of it. She was watching. I was kind of in and out. But that was a movie that when we first started dating, that we, we used to watch. That was one of my favorite movies. And matter of fact, Love Jones is the greatest love story of all time across all races, genres, and time frames. And don't be talking about the damn Bible. All right? I don't want to hear that. Love Jones. I don't want to hear that. Love Jones, but it was interesting because there's a there's a there's a there's a moment in the in the movie where um, the brother Darius whatever Love Hall I think his name is played by Lorenz Tate. He's sitting there typing <laughs> on a like typewriter, and my wife and I looked at each other like, "What in the hell?" Like, damn, I can remember that. It wasn't like a typewriter; it was like uh, one of those word processors or whatever that was a, a it was a desktop. You know what I'm saying? And uh, it was crazy. Then he got a call on the phone, picked up the damn phone, like ring. I'm like, whoa, taking me back. You know what I'm saying? But we thought we was on the cutting edge back then. Uh, Now we really are. As we get ready for 5G, as we get ready for Phi Optics, as we get ready for the integration of like hologram systems in your everyday household. I mean, the future is now. That's one of the dopest things, man. I mean, I want to see where the technology takes us. Who knows what the internet is going to morph into? We don't know. In 20 years, 20 years ago, there was no internet. So 20 years from now, the internet will look, it, it, you can't even forecast it. We have no idea. But hopefully we can all live long enough together to enjoy it. And that would be dope. Uh, good morning to you. 513-873-7134. Cam writes, top of the morning. Pardon me. Cam writes, uh, top of the morning to Nathan and the Choppers. Same to you, brother. Tony writes, good morning. Clue Magic writes, good morning, Nathan and the Choppers. Now, Clue Magic and Fast Pitch are doing a podcast called Cutting Through the Bull. And I can't say the rest until after 9 a.m. Cutting Through the BS. And uh, they got a great a great back and forth. They riff on, uh, as sometimes I say, culture, politics, and pleasure. But it's quite interesting. I've got a clip up right now on Sin Digital Media. I want you to check it out. I want you to check it out. Uh, I got another podcast that the ladies of the Dope Chicks Collective, there's a dope chick in every woman, I guess. I'm not sure what the uh, tag is. They got a couple tags, but I got a chance to sit in uh, on the last recording, like sit in in the room. And, uh, you know, you know, very, very interesting, very powerful for some. I can see that. I can see that podcast being very powerful. It's a it's a collective of dope chicks who come together in art and activism. And um, it's a safe space where they talk about what's what's really going on inside. Very interesting. And uh, it could be like a niche podcast. But I something tells me that I might really connect with a lot of people out there. It's called the Dope Chicks Collective. So look for clips and also links for the podcast from that podcast as well. And I put up like a real just basic video when they were recording. I didn't record all of it, but like some of the recording they did just to tease a little bit and some other reasons. And um, check it out. I'm very excited. I want you to check it out. Uh, Ray writes, no, no, the Deborah writes, good morning, Nate and the Choppers. Muzon writes, I remember watching Entertainers with Byron Allen and on The Breakfast Club, he talked about how he would go broke during that show on his own. He did that show by himself. I respect his hustle and Myra's grind to become a multi-billionaire. Yeah, I mean, you know, much respect to Byron. And again, it was amazing because it's like, I remember Byron Allen, then the next time he was he was doing big things. But I am. I did see the videos, uh, multiple videos. Matter of fact, I got the audio queued up right here because I want to listen to some of it. And as I said before, anytime Byron Allen got something to say, I want to pay attention to it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, because I just feel like he's on the same path or he created the path that I'm on now. Same thing. I'm kicking off the show with you, kicking off Sin Digital. And um, again, um, I'm optimistic, I mean, because I, I already know what's inside of me. So, again, Byron Allen had that determination where he just made it happen. And I remember reading or I saw him on The Breakfast Club talking about how he started on his kitchen table, basically. Sometimes that's how it starts. Sometimes that's how, usually that's how it starts, basically. And anybody create anything, usually, they, you know, they put a little studio together or they do something from the south they have and they just make it rock until it just it, it blows up or they decide to move on. Pat Wright took a good morning. Mason Mueller writes, two completely different scenarios. Mueller is different than Ukraine. 
well, not to his supporters. And again, I was speaking from the perspective of Trump supporters, because to me, that's the biggest indication as to whether Republican senators are going to jump off ship and betray Donald Trump. As a matter of fact, Who's going to betray Donald Trump is the title of a very viewed and much talked about, at least over the weekend and last week, they were talking about it quite a bit. Who's going to betray uh, Donald Trump? Anybody get a chance to read that article? People were talking about it when it came out and the speculation as to who, who, who what, what center is going to be the first domino, you know, who, who's going to uh, turn their, turn on Donald Trump. And, um, I, we shall see. We shall. It's called Who Will Betray Trump? That's what it's called. Who Will Betray Trump? And it was produced by Political Magazine. Matter of fact, I got it here. You might be interested in it. And I'm going to post it inside the chop shop here. Boom. You can check it out. There it is right there. Another good reason about the chop shop is that while we're talking, I can post the link. And wherever you are, you can pull up the link, especially if you're on your computer. And you can now read along with the show and you can do the same thing. If you like to post a link or maybe you've got some other link you want to share that's relevant to the conversation, uh, please feel free. Um, let me see here. Uh, so I'm, I'm reading from an article in the Grio. Now, keep in mind that the Grio was owned by Byron Allen. So that's why if you go to the Grio, you're getting a lot of, you know, propaganda. You know, in terms of really making a case for Byron Allen and his side. Just understand that. Just understand that. That's right. Byron Allen owns the All right, let me read directly. Here's a quote here. There's a chance that the Supreme Court will side with Comcast and charter by dismantling those critical protections provided under Section 1981 of the Civil Rights Act of 1986, of 1866. And in doing so, Erase equal opportunity protections afforded under the act. Again, this is the Grio. So the Supreme Court is going to decide whether or not a company's decision to not award a contract or job to an African-American or any person of color could be 99 percent based on a reason of race uh, and only one percent based on a lack of sufficient experience in the industry. Comcast is saying that if Byron's successful, that it could leave those entities impacted with no legal remedy to pursue. I'm reading directly from this Gree article. Again, just consider the source. Matter of fact, let me jump around to a, a more non-biased source. Because it'll be real here, the Grio is biased. You know, I ain't mad at him because there's a lot of biased news out there. But uh, I want to be accurate. What do you think? What do you think? Uh, let me go to the chop shop here. Um, he says two completely different scenarios. I hear you, Mason Marler, man, but to Trump supporters, they're not. Trump supporters look at it like, oh, they're trying to get the president. First, they tried the Mueller investigation. That didn't work. Now they're going to try impeachment. Mm-hmm. They're just mad about something. That's, that's what they're going to tell themselves. And if Trump doesn't lose his base, that means he keeps control of the Republican Party which means that potentially he can affect like primaries, elections, midterm elections, if he's reelected. I don't know. I think the Republicans would prefer to have Trump run again than to get somebody else because he's got the best opportunity to win, right? He's already in power. That's all I'm saying. Mike Rice, rise and shine, young stars. So Mason Marley, you telling me that you really can see Republican senators jumping ship and turning on Donald Trump and voting to impeach him. So what will that mean for those Republican senators if they go up for re-election years afterward? You know, are, are the Trumpsters going to hold them against them? Probably. And again, the biggest threat will be from a Republican challenger who comes out and says, I never would have voted for impeachment. I, I, I don't know, man. I don't know. Mason Marler writes, if conservatives care about the facts, why should Democrats give a F Donald Trump and the Republicans? Don't care. 
Pamela Rice Trump will be impeached but not removed. He'll be impeached but not removed. Right. Okay, so if he's impeached but not removed, how is that a win for the Democrats? Diana's in the house. Donnie B, she writes, fame. What are you talking about? Kaepernick has been working out five days a week for the last three years. He's never stopped. Mason Marler writes, grab him by the what? What happened to family values? Family values is just some of that BS political stuff that the Republicans use when it's in their own favor. They don't really mean it. They only mean it when they can use it politically. Because if they cared about family values, they'd be, you know, they would be more upset about the lack of family values shown by the president. They don't care. They care about power. He's their guy. They get access. He gave them this incredible win with the tax bill. He's spending money like crazy for shit they like. And he's got the support of the party, of the people that, that, that of the Republican Party. So they're going to roll with him. That's it. I don't expect anything different. I don't expect anything different. Trump likes the chaos, but he doesn't control the facts that will come out starting today. Get your popcorn ready. Well, it's going to be great theater. I'll be watching. Don't get me twisted. I'll be checking in. I think it's going to be great political theater, but again, it's theater. That's all it is. <laughs> I don't, uh, we, we, we shall see. I, I hope I'm wrong. You know, I hope I'm wrong, but mm, I don't think so. Miss D's in the house. She writes greetings. Hey, good to see you, Miss D. I'm not sure what that is. Uh, Cassandra's in the house. She writes, hey, choppers. Hey, what's going on with you, Cassandra? Good to see you. Uh, Mrs. Love being black writes, good morning, fellow beautiful choppers. Hey, good morning to you, Mrs. Love being black. I like that name. Mason Marley writes, and 15 years later, he's writing the same old ish that most already know. I'm just saying. Okay. Muzon writes, this is a setup by the NFL to collectively say, finally, we don't want him in the league. He won't get picked up even though he's better than most QBs in the league. I don't know. I'll take him over Ryan Finley. <laughs> I'll take him over Ryan Finley any day. I'm saying, I mean, I don't care. Listen, if Colin Kaepernick gets his job back, cool, but it's it's not some big win for the community. It's not like, oh, I've been missing phone calls. Oh, my bad. Sorry about that. Damn. I didn't miss Craig Glenn. Uh, sorry about that. I'm oh, sorry about that. I'm a brother on the West Coast. Sorry about that. I missed the calls. Hit me back up if you have time. Listen, if Colin Kaepernick gets his job back, I guess it'll be good for him as an athlete. He was blackballed. But as I said earlier, he's going back to the same racist institution that that originally blackballed him. I mean, for him, it's a win because he gets to go back and play on the level that he, you know, basically was pushed out of because of his political views. If he was talking about white Jesus, nobody would have had a problem with it. And if they did, he certainly would have been blackballed because of it. Now, if you was talking about black Jesus, mm, now you're getting political. You got to get you, oh, we got to get you up out of the locker room. You're a cancer. <laughs> you got to go. Come in here with that black Jesus. But, you know, the, the, you get the point I'm trying to make. So it's good for him as an individual, but as me, for a community, it makes no difference. There's no difference whatsoever. So what? He gets his job back in the NFL. Big deal. I don't know why people act like that was some great goal. It's not. It's not. Uh, have you noticed that nobody made any fuss whatsoever over that whole uh, thing? Hold on, hold on. Let me, before I say that, let me just double check one thing. Um, um, let me see. Let me see here. Okay, I, I'll leave that alone. I'll leave that alone. Uh, Angela writes salutations. Cam writes, Mason, for every fact they will have an alternative fact. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, Angela writes, what about the elderly, sickly, or homeless? They aren't doing their best at this time of year. You're right about that. 
Pam writes, good morning, fam. Hey, Pam, good to see you. Good to see you. Brian writes, gray hairs and all, ready for the, the cold weather. Gray hair is sexy. Gray hair is the new brown hair. <laughs> oh. Angela writes, hopefully they get those cold weather shelters and centers open up and servicing the least of these. Absolutely. Absolutely. She's right about that. I think we got drop on the line. Hold on one second. I'm sure he has to call in and defend his boy today. Got to come in and defend his boy. Let's see. Uh, good morning, drop. Welcome to the show. What's going on, man? Good morning, Mr. Ivy. I'm, I'm calling in to give you a round of applause to finally hear you agree with what I've been saying ever since this fake impeachment inquiry began back at the beginning of October. Well, it's not fake. So, yes, it is. No, it's not. I mean, they've got yeah. good reason to go for impeachment. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, Trump tried to use, mm-hmm. he tried to do a quid pro quo with Ukraine to to score right. some points against or get some dirt against a political rival. That's a no-no. So he did right. the that deed. Is, that is, uh-huh. I mean, we yeah, all know he, he did, did the deed. deed. It's just about can they actually impeach him and convince these Republican senators? Well, that's true, but it's just like in the movie Training Day, Denzel Washington's character used to always say, it's not what happened, it's what you can prove. Okay, so up to this point, the reason I call it a fake impeachment inquiry is because Nancy Pelosi, after... She started this whole thing when the whistleblower came out and indicated that there was a call that he um, was familiar with through someone who told him what happened on this call, okay? So the Democrats or this whistleblower or whoever was working with him to coordinate this, they assumed that Trump was going to follow normal presidential policies which is obvious after three years, that's not what he does. They thought that he would not release the transcript because all calls between foreign leaders and the president of the United States are supposed to be confidential because the president is the one that sets foreign policy. That's why he has the power to remove any ambassador he wants to for any reason he wants to just like he removed the FBI director, James Comey. Okay? So, again, I don't want to go back to the Mueller investigation because it's not really necessary. Because, like I said, at this point, Nancy Pelosi said she gave herself an out, Nate. She said that after all this, well, after this phase, because she said this is the second phase of the inquiry, which was the first phase, which was in private. So she said after this phase is is complete, she will decide if she sends article of impeachment to the full house, then they will vote on the articles that Nancy Pelosi sends to her at the conclusion of this inquiry. And then at that point, that's when the official Impeachment begins when the full House takes the vote on the articles that are sent to them after Nancy's investigation. So let's say if they agree with the articles, then it goes to the Senate, which we already know you need 20 Republicans of the 50. Okay, so I mean, come on, Nate. We haven't heard anything from any senators other than Mitt Romney a couple of weeks ago. And then after he did that, Lindsey Graham, who's the, the, the leader of his caucus in the Senate, he had a vote of all 50 of his Republicans and all of them but one. Well, I think all but three didn't uh, sign on to the resolution to say that Nancy Pelosi's fake impeachment inquiry was a scam. So that's my take right now, Mr. Ivey. Yeah, but it's not a scam. A scam implies that there was no 
substance to it. There's substance to it. We we can, but we both admitted that. Oh yes, but but a scam is a coordinated effort to acquire something from someone under false pretenses. That's a scam. Okay, I work for the postal service. I used to deliver scams inside of envelopes. Postal inspectors would go after people sending political scams through the mail. So I know about scams. So the point again, Mr. Ivy, Nancy Pelosi and Adam Schiff, they have to prove all these things to the full House that these are articles of impeachment that can remove the sitting president less than 100 days from a national election. So, like I used to tell referees when I would evaluate and videotape them and show them what they did not see, okay? Because, Nate, the tape does not lie. So when the cameras go on, which is going to be in the middle of the day when most Americans are working, they're going to ride on the hopes of that that entity that you always talk about and you are part of and you endorse. It's called the social media. Nate, you're talking about these heads are going to be chopped up. They're going to be mixed. They're going to be swirled and tossed up by all sides on social media. So it's going to be fun for us because we love it. And I loved your monologue today. I mean, you were spot on, Mr. Ivy. So we just sit back and watch because I've seen this before, Nate. I am not a guy that boasts, okay? But, I mean, come on, Nate. I've been telling y'all this. You and the choppers in the shop shop. And there's really only one person in there that's been pushing back for no reason. I mean, there's other people in the chop shop that push back on me on all kinds of subjects. But Mr. Mahler is the only one that, I mean, Nate, he sounds like a fool to think that even if he is impeached and the Senate does not acquit, that somehow that helps the Democrats. It doesn't. Trump has been, Trump was at Alabama on Saturday night. Did you see that meme of the stadium, Nate? I did not. How long? Oh, Nate, you got to pull it up. It was unbelievable, Nate. Now, granted, it was a wide shot, so there was no uh, close-ups of anybody, but they had Trump and um, his wife on the monitor, just like they did at the baseball game. But this was unbelievable, Nate. So, like I said, I'm calling to agree with you, Mr. Ivy. So what happened? Tell us the meme or the video. What happened in the video? Okay, well, leading up to the game uh, at Alabama, Alabama, right, it was because of what happened in Washington, the officials at the stadium, they sent notices to all the student dorms and fraternities and told them that certain disrespectful cheers and chants will not be allowed. And if they find out, they will lose their rights to go to college football games for the rest of the season. And that is one event that these young people go to college for, to go to the tailgating you, uh, and that whole thing. So, when the game started, okay, some people thought that these rebel students were going to go against the uh, faculty. But we're in a red state, okay? So the, everybody was waiting to see what the reaction was going to be when they appeared on the monitor. But, Nate, the cheers were sustained for, it was about five minutes straight. Five minutes. And you know, Nate, in the mm. business that you do, Five minutes is a long time. That's terrible. Now, again, now, again, Nate, it was a meme. So, you know me, I always trust to verify. So, I went to a couple of different places and it, it was it was there. So, again, before I go, Nate, I'm agreeing with you, but I'm not, I'll rephrase it and I won't say that you agree with me because you got to maintain your credibility as Nate. I don't lose credibility. I'm not trying to agree or disagree with you, man. I'm trying to stick with the facts. And uh, I know know you know about scams because you try to run one every day and it ain't working. (laughs) Well, guess what, Mr. Mr. Ivy? As soon as I hang up, it's going to be somebody following my call. <laughs> okay, I won't say no more. But uh, great show so far, Mr. Ivy. Drop Squad 52. Dropping science to anyone who wants to catch it. Peace, brother. Yeah, appreciate you, man. Take it easy. Appreciate that, brother. I mean, listen, he supports the Nathan Ivy show. 
<laughs> At the end of the day, I am a simple creature. I support those that support me. And I'm sure you're the same way, right? Uh, it's real simple. You rock with me, I rock with you. And that's how it is. Um, Listen, quick break. I'm going to give you a Bloomberg Urban Report, some news that perhaps you can use. Um, Very short break, and then we'll come back and uh, pick back up on the well, conversation. I'm Jenna Wilson. Tech firms are trying to become more diverse. Microsoft released a report that showed small strides in the hiring of women and minorities. The number of female employees grew by 12% in fiscal 2019. The number of African-American or black workers increased globally by 17%. Meanwhile, Dell announced a goal to make half of its global workforce female by the year 2030. The company also said it wants 25% of its U.S. workers to be African-American or Hispanic by the year 2030, which would be an increase from almost 13% this year. And in July, Facebook said it wants to double the number of women, black and Hispanic employees in the U.S. in the next five years. That's your Bloomberg Urban Report. I'm Donna Wills. Unexpected reactions to smart financial decisions brought to you by FeedThePig.org. Well, I finally did it. I opened a 401k. So you're giving up. Just like that. Giving up on what? I'm getting an inheritance from a distant relative. Don't you think if there were a billionaire in the family, we'd know about it by now? Listen to me. We are one phone call away from riding horses on our own private polo grounds. One call from christening yachts, having a butler using summer as a verb. How do you figure? Look, everyone's got a rich uncle somewhere. It's statistics. So the best thing you can do is just prepare for the inevitable. Right. Which is why I thought maybe it would be smart to take control of my finances. You know, start using a budget, get out of debt, set some retirement goals. Budgets? Debt? You watch your mouth. Retirement shouldn't be a goal for us. It should be a way of life. When it comes to financial stability, don't get left behind. Get tools and tips for saving at feedthepig.org. This message brought to you by the American Institute of CPAs and the Ad Council. Before you book your next photographer, ask yourself this. Do they have the skill and experience to handle your project? Can they provide outstanding images at an affordable rate? You may want to consider Shanghai. With Shanghai Imaging, you not only receive quality custom images, but a reliable professional photographer ready to handle your visual needs. Shanghai Imaging specializes in wedding and family photography, personal boudoir videography, real estate photography, and even modeling portfolios at a great affordable rate. Well, what are you waiting for? Contact Shanghai at 513-278-7717 or visit their website at shanghaiimaging.com today because imaging is everything. That wasn't too uh, long, was it? Good morning. Welcome back. Nate Ivan in the air chair. Let me turn that down a little bit. There it is. Feel like I'm being drowned out. Good morning. There it is. I'm live, local, and vocal. Nathan Ivy broadcasting live from beautiful Cincinnati, Ohio. We make history every single day as Cincinnati's first daily digital show. I got to let people know. You might forget. And uh, we're chopping it up. This morning, we're talking about current events. Byron Allen. What happens if Byron Allen loses his case to, against Comcast and Charter Communications? What happens? What, what, what would that mean? Will there be any impact on black businesses, black owned media endeavors? Also, uh, today is a big day in terms of public or public political drama. Big day. Donald Trump's possible impeachment begins uh, or goes to another phase, a public phase. So what can you expect? You can expect uh, uh, between now and Friday, you can expect on each and every day, multiple witnesses who are going to come forward in public and answer questions from members of the House of Representatives. Where the Democrats hold a majority, committee majority, so they'll be they'll be controlling the rules. They'll be controlling the time. They'll be controlling who said what and when. I think it's going to be interesting if you're into that kind of thing. And I am. 
You don't have to be I am. I said, I made a pledge to my audience many years ago. I will take my time and my money and waste it in some endeavors so you don't. All right, so let me do that. If not, you're not into it or perhaps you are, we can uh, we can connect during the day perhaps. And uh, I'm looking forward to the testimony to hear what happens. But again, I'm a cynic. Uh, I'm a hard sell in the sense of I don't think it's going to really make a lot of difference. When it comes to Trump, people are polarized. I don't think there's been a more polarizing president in my adult lifetime other than Donald Trump. I don't believe that anything that comes out this week is going to sway people one way or another. You got some people in the middle there. You got some white Democrats that voted for Trump because they couldn't stand Hillary. They didn't really like Trump, but they can't stand Hillary. They had no idea that the Russians were running psyops and 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 all kinds of maneuvers, right? And campaigns to misdirect people. It wasn't just black people. It was all voters. They got they got some of these white educated folks too. Talking about 2016, the Russians, the counterintelligence operatives and the psyops and all the Twitter bots and the Facebook. I mean, they're going to do it again. Get ready for it. You don't hear anybody talking about security uh, to our elections and security in terms of Facebook. You rarely hear about it, should I say. I mean, the Democrats most recently had a conversation with Mark Zuckerberg, who's a CEO chairman of Facebook. He is the seventh wealthiest man or person on the planet. I think he's worth like $40 billion, like something crazy. Something crazy. Speaking of which, and I have it in my notes, and I didn't get a chance to talk about it earlier, but since I brought up Zuckerberg and his amazing amount of wealth, um, I want to throw this out here. Elizabeth Warren, she has been making, uh, you know, one of her proposals has really had people talking, and, and she's got a proposal where she wants to tax Uber wealthy people. Like if you make over $50 million, they want to tax you. And if you're a billionaire, she has another tax. They call it the wealth tax. We absolutely should do that. I mean, it's a no brainer. It's a no brainer. And for the people out there who would like make excuses and say things like, well, they're going to take away the incentive to become a millionaire. Yeah, right. I don't believe it. I don't care what the taxes are. More is more, <laughs> period. Like, like people are going to strive. They, people are going to lose their capitalistic urges to become billionaires if we tax them at 8%. Oh, I don't believe that. <laughs> I don't believe that at all. You're still going to have wealthy people. It'll just be more money that can go back into programs, go back through the government, take care of our roads and bridges. There's tremendous amounts of wealth, man. There's no ideas that we think are good that shouldn't be funded. It's too much wealth in this country. Elizabeth Warren has a wealth tax. And that's how she's going to pay for some of uh some of her some of her proposals. She's going to tax the rich. She on some, she's on some Robin Hood stuff. The wealth tax and Charles Schwab's uh, Schwab and others is like a a group of billionaires who are resisting her because they want to keep their billions. I mean, at some point, don't you have enough money? I mean, okay, you hit a billion. What you can't spend all that money? You're gonna your family's gonna be taken care of. I mean, what's the difference really between the lifestyle between a billionaire and a forty billion? A 40, if you're a billionaire. And then let's say you got another guy that's worth $40 billion. What's the lifestyle difference between the two? I can't believe it's that big. I cannot believe it is that big. I mean, it's just got to be nothing more than just greed or the desire to try to own everything. Or, you know, your buddy's got a a 10,000 square foot mansion. So you had to go out and get a 36,000 square foot mansion. You know, oh, you got 36 square thousand? Okay, down in Florida, I got an 80,000 square foot mansion. You know, enough is enough. Uh, but they they say that's anti-capitalism. To me, it just makes sense. What do you think? 513-873-7134. Uh, Brian Rice, I know people who still like reading the newspaper. I like reading the newspaper. I like touching paper. I like reading books. 
Um, I'm not a, I can't read like digital books. I can't do that. I like to have the book itself and touch it and hold it and, you know, carry it with me. Yeah. I like paper too, man, but paper is expensive and paper is old media, but I, I would hope that we always maintain paper newspapers, but and that's just me talking. Daniela writes, fake workout on a Saturday instead of Tuesday when all the head coaches and GMs can attend. Who's even coming? Real question. If Kaepernick gets back in the league, will he continue to take a knee? I think he will. They got new policies now. So he can take his knee. See, the thing about it is the NFL never should have made a big deal about it because it never was a big deal. Take your knee, big deal. Don't come up with a policy. Don't try to stop them. If the whole team wants to take a knee, let them take a knee. And it would have blew, it would have blew over. It would have blew over, but they made it a big deal. And of course, the president, he he weighed in and stirred up the pot. But I hope Kate, I hope Cap gets a chance and does well. You know, as an athlete, as somebody that admires people that, you know, I hope that people can do what they love to do. I mean, great. You know, from that standpoint, I want the brother to go back and live his athletic gridiron glory. That was great. I thought he was a, a cool player. He was a good player. But it's not going to make a difference for the movement, whatever movement. And now he's going back under the yoke of the same masters that that dispelled him because he was a bad Negro. Now he's going to go back. So, I mean, then, you know, he's got money. Why is he doing it? He's doing it because as an athlete, that's what he that's He wants to be on that level. And I understand that. I get it. Sorinthia's in the house. She writes, good morning. Donietta writes, yes, I get 100% of my news online. And that's what the studies show or... Um, it shows that online trends are just that. And it's across all age groups, black and white, across all races. You know, everything is going, it's internet based. Everything is, internet. I told you three years ago when we got on the internet, this is where I want to be. I want to be on the internet. I like it, right? And because that's that's the future. It's the, it's the fast lane. And it's not, I don't think the TV will go away. There's always going to be an appetite for it. It's just how you get your TV. You know what I'm saying? I think that's what's changing, has changed. Uh, Daniela writes, Love Jones is trash. See, being a hater, Love Jones is absolutely the best love movie of all time. And if it's not Daniela Bailey, what is? What is? Uh, Clue Magic writes, The Steelers would go after Kaepernick. They can use him immediately and they seem like the only organization with the cojones to do so. I agree with you. I agree with you. Plus, the Steelers have a fabulous black head coach, Mike Tomlin, who, despite losing, um, you would say, two of the best players in the league, Le'Veon Bell and Antonio Brown, and losing a two-time Super Bowl champion quarterback, is still competing. It just underscores how bad of a job the Bengals are doing at 0-9. Everybody's talking about AJ. They lost two of the best players in the league and an all-time quarterback, and they're still competing. And meanwhile, the Bengals are floundering. I'll say it again. I hope the Bengals go 0-77. I think that's how many days that Tracy Hunter was incarcerated consecutively. I mean that. I hope they go 0-77, which I've counted out would be about seven, I think about seven seasons, and um, seven, eight seasons, maybe earlier than that, somewhere around there. And uh, I think that's what we need because I think that would be that would be the wake up call that we need to do two things for us to realize how utterly unimportant this the sports is to the larger, um, you know, society here in Cincinnati. Although uh, maybe that's the right wrong wrong, the the wrong word to use society, because a lot of people think it's really important. Um, I just don't see how we spread the wealth of the Bengals. How is that being spread or among the people? I just don't see it. Um, but everybody else does, so I guess that's all that really matters. Fame writes, a bunkie writes, this fake impeachment will only benefit Trump more. Media bad or good is good for Trump. It's not a fake impeachment as I understand it. When I hear fake impeachment, that means that they're trumping up the reasons. They didn't trump up the reasons, pun intended. Trump actually did it, and they got him. Now, for me, I thought the Democrats should, this is all politics, this is this is politics. I think whenever there's an impeachment, it's always a political process. That's what I think personally. You know what I'm saying? I'm just being real with you. How many people have been impeached? Whether well, it was Andrew Johnson, 
Um, John Tyler. President Richard Nixon, I think that's the most, well, one of the most famous ones, right? Watergate. And William Clinton, who was impeached by the House because he perjured himself and also obstruction of justice because he had an affair with a woman, Monica Lewinsky. Now, I told you back then, who cares about who he's sleeping with? I don't give a damn about him. He should have been impeached for his policies. That was my flow back in the day. I didn't care about Monica Lewinsky. He got a girlfriend. Okay, cool. Big deal. You know, so what? You know, it's between him and his wife. Him and Hillary. What I thought he should have been impeached about was his, his the crime bill and his other goofy-ass policies. I'll never forget, people was running around here. Black people was running around like, yeah, our first black president with Bill Clinton. I used to think these was the dumbest black people I ever saw in my life. What makes him the first black president? Because he went on Arsenio show? He put on some shades? He got a girlfriend? It was stupid. So that was William Jeff. I mean, William Jefferson Clinton. That was number four. And I believe perhaps uh, <laughs> Trump will be five. Is that right? Oh, boy. You just kind of knew that Trump was going to do this to himself. You just kind of knew that. And uh, we'll see. I say that we should focus on 2020. The Democrats should focus on getting a good candidate policies that people really care about. People get excited about people that want to go out and vote for. That's what they should be. They should be talking about the future of the Internet and how who the president is controls and has has a real impact on the future of the Internet and net neutrality. As I told you earlier, these are black issues where the black people, the larger community understand it or not. I do. Right. Trust, but verify. Is a trust but verify is Trump is a I was gonna call him Trump, but drop would say one hundred percent. Clue Magic Rice, say that shit with your chest drop, LMAO. Angela Rice, Trump is gonna serve another term. Next topic. You know what? My uncle, he and I talk about politics all the time. He's old school. He uh he he believes the same thing, Angela. He believes the same thing. He believes no matter what happens, Trump is is 100% getting back in there. He was the same dude that told me before anybody else did, like in my circle of friends and family and people I talked to, he was the first person that told me that he thought that Trump was going to be Hillary. I don't know. I don't know. Diana Rice, right, Tracy? I saw that like John Legend. Oh, we need a do-over. Clearly, his family and friends got to vote. Yeah, that last night that made a stir on the internet that John Legend was named People's Magazine Sexiest Man Alive. And sidebar, who in the hell put People Magazine in charge of what's sexy or not? Isn't this some old European, European lens that they filtering through? They didn't ask me. They didn't call. Did anybody get a call from People Magazine saying, here's our list of candidates? I don't know how they determine this, but I think that it is a one of those cultural engines of white supremacy in a white European centric model. It's always been that way. Now, in recent years, they open it up. Like I've seen a lot of brothers on there like Idris Elba. Right now, when Idris was on there, everybody said they got it right. OK. Well, if they was right then, they got to be right now. So John Legend must be the sexiest black man alive right now. Really? Uh, to me, that's something you got to pay for. Something, that's something you got to pay for. Like, people don't realize that. Like, sometimes, <laughs> let's just say that sometimes it might seem like it's an award, but it's really something that people pay for. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> that's the truth. Oh, man. And who in the hell? John Legend? I mean, listen, if that's what the ladies think, I mean, who am I to challenge what the ladies think is sexy? I don't know these things. I don't know. But I thought it was interesting, if you're into that kind of thing. Fame writes, I wish Alicia Reese doesn't come back to Cincinnati politics. She crooked as F and pretty much founded the most recent iteration of local black boule. You know what, man? Why are you disrespecting Alicia Reese? That reminds me. That reminds me. Uh, I'm due for a conversation with Alicia Reese. She is running for uh, Hamilton County uh, Commissioner. And uh, I think it's going to be, here it is. 
John Cranley has endorsed Alicia Reese for Hamilton County Commissioner. That's the latest. You didn't, yo, you didn't know? Was you don't know? Yeah, so why you in here dissing this sister? You always got a problem with black females, man. What is your problem, fame? I mean, do you have any evidence or you just talking? Probably has no evidence whatsoever, but I'm looking. I'm on uh, Alicia Reese's Facebook page right now. 18 hours ago, a uh, live press conference, and I uh, see Alicia there and uh, a group of uh, supporters along with uh, the mayor of Cincinnati, who is a what, there's the white male Democrat. It looks like they're standing on the back steps of City Hall or one of the steps of City Hall or some kind of building downtown. I'm going to go ahead and like that. I see Tracy Dillingham is in here. She writes, Alicia Reese for commissioner. Is that right? To take Todd Porsoon? Satan, is that what she's doing? A lot of well wishes in here. Trying to see if I see any other choppers. I see one other chopper in here. Yeah, so here you are hating on Alicia Reese, and here she is about to do big things, bro. She's doing big things out here. I support Alicia Reese. I support her. I have no problem with female leadership. We need more of it. We need more of it. Look at what men have done. They fucked it up. That's what they've done. So, I, you know, I'm not one of those brothers that has a problem with, you know, voting for or following a woman's lead. If she on point, she on point. See here, Alicia Reese. <laughs> my, I don't know why my board is acting up right here. Here it is. Got it. Got it. Got it. I want to see if I can play this press conference for you from her page. What I'm looking for. Oh, okay, there it is. Huh. I don't know why it's not there, hmm, but it's here. It's quite interesting. I don't know. Facebook still confuses me <laughs> sometimes. Mazon writes, um, okay, he's talking uh, Kaepernick. Clue writes, washed. Kaepernick is better still, better than half the QBs in the league. Ray writes, Donnie B, look at Michael Bennett, Dallas. Oh, okay. That must be some woman stuff. That must be some old woman stuff. Bunky Rice, black quarterback in the NFL or changing the game. Hashtag winning. Uh, more of this. Uh, betray Donald Trump or continue betraying the United States. Hell of a choice they have to make. But it's simple, really. It's simple, really, for a person of conscious. But people of conscious uh, need to unite. Let me see here. I, I'm on her page, but for whatever reason, it's not coming up. Oh, okay, great, great. That's all great stuff. So I can't wait to talk to Alicia Reese and, and, and talk up to her about what her platform is, why she's running. I think that would be dope. I think that would be dope. I do. I do. I'm sure you do, too. I mean, I want to hear what, what why and uh, what she wants to do. Tracy writes, in Cincinnati News, John Cranley endorsed Alicia Reese yesterday. Tracy, I swear to God, I just read that. I just scrolled down. I didn't see it earlier. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, I would like to see Alicia and Eric Kearney as Hamilton County Commissioners. I heard that Eric Kearney was stepping away from that. Not her, but read it. I guess he said, mm, no. Yeah, I, I support Eric Kearney, too. I think, um, I mean, I want to hear what he has to say. But he's got a good reputation. Um, let's see. Stephanie Dumas and her drama king chief of staff are out of there at the end of her term. You know what? Speaking of drama king, I want I want I'm, I'm about that drama. I would like to know. Like, what happened? Um, okay, you know what? I am looking for an interview with Ray Ball. Hey, okay, great. Yeah, here's our email. I got an email already. But because Ray Ball, if you know Ray Ball, is um, doing some big things. And I don't know all the details of it. But essentially, she ended up doing something with Nike in a way that empowers the community through uh, a Nike shoe design. I mean, just to read the headline to you without getting all into the details, but I just wanted to come on the show if she had the time 
and just give us the details and, and let us know how we can support or, you know, just tell us a story and we can give her props. But Cincinnati's doing big things. I've said it all. I've been saying it for years, man. Cincinnati is not like any other city in the country. We are different. We are different. Ohio is different. Cincinnati is changing right before our eyes. And um, many interesting things are happening. Many interesting things are happening. Um, Donetta writes, yeah, the Democrats choose to impeach Trump on some philosophical BS no one fully understands or cares about. It doesn't affect Americans day to day. Who really gives a damn about Trump withholding money to the Ukraine until they dig up dirt on Biden? I'm like, okay, who cares? Up the Ukraine. What the hell does this have to do with the worth the price of tea in China? Can I get a job and some health insurance with that? Question mark. Of all the shit Trump has done, the Dems choose this Ukraine BS? Hispanics are living in concentration camps and their kids are getting raped. This dude allowed Russians to rig our election, destroy the Department of Justice, but heaven forbid he withholds the Ukraine's check. (laughs) <laughs> good flows <laughs> listen if you haven't already done so take a moment right now and go wherever you listen to podcasts and subscribe to the is it just me podcast with donnie b as she riffs in her own unique way about current events about you know breaking down you know you know the news with a legal lens if if you want to hear what's going on uh, from a very provocative and informed viewpoint, check out the Is It Just Me podcast and subscribe. You can do it on Speaker or wherever you listen to podcasts. If you like to be on Spotify, go to Spotify right now and uh, you can subscribe to that podcast. Um, see, Tony writes, the only entertainment I get from this impeachment trial is the sight of old white men in suits standing in protest on stairways looking stupid like some damn Brady Bunch kids. <laughs> it's hilarious. I'm going to give you a couple of ABs on that one. Uh, but back to what Donnie B said, you know, I think I felt the same way, but I think it's political. So it's like, oh, we got them. You know, we got something we can impeach them with. And the Ukraine stuff, it just fell into their lap. So they roll with it. And to me, an impeachment is largely, I mean, we know that it's in the Constitution. So, you know, it's deeper than that. But to me, it just seems like it's, it's a political thing. And I mean, again, this is politics. I think the Democrats are hoping. Yeah, you're hoping to turn some people. I don't think it's going to happen, but it's right before an election. So if you can sully the name of your political opponent by drudging up a whole lot of his business and also keep in mind, we don't know where this impeachment thing is going to end. It may start with the Ukraine. And again, somebody correct me if I'm wrong on this, but as I understand it, the boundaries of it are, you know, sort of like not defined, meaning that it can expand into other things that could be impeachable offenses. So we don't know what's being cooked up, but it's all politics. I'm with you. I think, you know, what I want to hear from the Democrats are policies that matter. What I want to hear from the Democrats, from the candidates are ideas that's going to impact you know, where I live, what I can see, what matters to me, you know, like she said, the kitchen table stuff, because that's what matters to most people. You know, the kids in the concentration camps, Hispanics, that's within the purview of the president. See, one thing we can say about Trump that we can't say about Obama, and this is why I say, if you know anything about Trump's history and his battles with New York media, this is what Trump does. This don't mean shit to that man. A lawsuit might have somebody in tears. You send a lawsuit to Trump, he got this ain't nothing to him. He got so many lawyers, so many connects. He'll tie this shit up until the day you die. Trump don't give a damn about lawsuits. And nobody else cares. I mean, there was a lawsuit alleging that Trump settled on uh, major housing discrimination violations in a building that Trump owned, basically pushing out black folks and not letting black folks move in. This was widely known information that was out there previous to the election of 2016. People still voted on him. They still voted for him. And they voted for him largely because of the vilification of Hillary Clinton. You know, it it was great politics, you know. So basically, 
you know, when you know it's going to be a, a tough, if you know you got a candidate that's got some dirt, you want to kick up the dirt in your opponent. That's what they did. And she had a lot of dirt. Hillary Clinton was one of the most unpopular presidential candidates in U.S. history. The only person close to her was Donald Trump. In a lot of ways, she was a perfect challenger for Donald Trump. And it, it happened. <laughs> You know, it wasn't so much. You got people out there that didn't so much not didn't so much vote for Donald Trump. They just wasn't going to vote for Hillary. Some of these people are sexist because sexism is alive and well today. Don't get it twisted. You know, I know somebody. You sound like the dumbest person I've ever heard in my life. I ain't going to vote for no woman. Are you losing your mind? I told this this is a black man. Are you losing your mind? I couldn't even continue the conversation. I was going to get mad about it. Sounded like the dumbest black man I've ever heard in my entire life. But anyway, that's what it is. The Trump, the, the Democrats want to get some dirt on this guy. The Ukraine stuff is dirt. They're going to use it. They're going to use it. And they're going to trot for these witnesses for every single day. They're going to sit down. They're going to say, you know, Trump did this deed. And again, like I said, let me finish the point here. What I, the point I was making about Obama and Trump. Trump. He's challenging the boundaries of the power of the president. That's what we're seeing on every level. Every time somebody say presidents can't do this, that's exactly what he wants to do. And what happens? It goes to court. There are multiple lawsuits where the Trump administration is challenging the boundaries of the U.S. presidency. Obama didn't really do that. It would have been nice to see that kind of effort. Now, I understand the politics of it. But like I said, Trump don't give a damn. He say he want to change something, they change it. They tell him he's supposed to have so many people in the State Department. Oh, really? Oh, 500? We're going to put 100 there. <laughs> you know, is it is what it is. And there's a point there. Fame writes, Donetta, you know how I feel about black women as leading black men to hell. Sorry, but it's true. Doesn't mean all, but a lot of black women are itty, are ishy, are shitty, but think they are doing men favors. Nope. I mean, you're talking to Donnie B, and uh, she can fend for herself. But since she put in the chop shop and I'm the host, I will respond. Um, I mean, there's some true there. I mean, there's some shitty people, male and female. So that's where, you know, you kind of lose it a little bit on that fame. Uh, let me see here. Uh, <laughs> Clue Magic writes, the Bengals won't do it. They are ussy. The Bengals won't pick up Kaepernick. You're right. They won't. And that same decision-making is what makes them so sorry right now. Have you noticed that no coaches have been fired by the Bengals? They just fired some linebacker. They just cut a linebacker. He was a starter, and they cut him. Not one coach. I mean, how is it not the coach's fault and you're 0-9? Did you know that the worst record for the Bengals is 0-10? That's the worst start ever. And again, I hope the Bengals go 0-16 this year. That would be a great year. If these mofos get to like week 13, 14 and try to win a game, I'm going to be disappointed. If you're going to do something, do it well. If you're going to be the shittiest team in the league, be the worst team in the league. Oh, my God, man. Why am I even discussing the Bengals? I'm sorry. Sorry about that. Uh, Ladies, is John Legend the sexiest man alive? Or is it still Idris Elba? Who in the hell... (laughs) That was rigged. That is rigged. If John Legend is the sexiest man alive, then I'm 6'2". Fuck it. <laughs> that's funny. Uh, listen, that's for the ladies. Angela Rice, symbolic-ish like Clinton's impeachment, right? But it worked. It worked. See, the Republicans, man. See, the one difference I learned about the Republicans is this is just a larger macro observation. If I'm wrong or you want to challenge it, you got the number. But one difference I've noticed is that Republicans, Republicans ask for forgiveness. Democrats ask for permission. You know, Trump asks for forgiveness after he does what he's going to do. Democrats are sitting around trying to play by the rules and making sure it's right. And by the end, you know, the moment just passed. You know what I'm saying? That's one difference I got from like Trump and Obama. You know, although Obama had his real G moments with that health bill, I'll say it again. 
People can lie and say what they want to say. It's on the Internet. You can never say that Obama did not allow the Republicans to have their input on the health bill. I don't care what Fox News tells you, because I watched about seven, eight hours of him debating Republican congressmen and women and senators. And they couldn't fuck with him. They could not. He knew that ACA backward and forth. He understood what was going on. He sat there right next to Joe Biden. It's all on YouTube. It was great political theater for people that's into that kind of stuff. I thought it was great. Uh, Nathan Steve Reese politics is Alicia Reese politics. He is the actual leader. I'm just saying, well, I don't know them like that. I don't know Alicia Reese like that. Um, I, I have heard that, but so what, you know, her father's in her life and they connect and link up on stuff, you know, and what's, I think it could be worse things in that. I, you know, people say, well, Steve, with that Steve Reese politics, I don't know if that's a negative thing or not. How is that negative? You know what I'm saying? You're supposed to link up with your family. You know, if they linked up politically, he's pushing her, he's helping her, using his influence to help her and her agenda, whatever it may be. Isn't that what family's supposed to do? I think so. I don't have a problem with it. I'm not saying I think that Alicia Reese is perfect because nobody is, but I'm just saying that uh, generally speaking, I support the sister. Uh, Fame writes, uh, right, bunk, single black moms. Not all, but many have wrecked the community, talking reckless, beating kids, and nobody to check their flanger behavior. Black people need a paradigm shift. More submissive and less aggressive women. White women put a battery in their backs with feminism and look at us now. Oh, you trying to stir some shit up, huh? You is trying to stir some shit up, huh? I see you. I see you, Fame. I ain't mad at you, you know? But, um... He said more submissive and less aggressive women. Uh, let me see. Talking reckless, beating their kids. Where was the boy's father? That's the question, though. You know, we're talking about this mother who went off on her br- on her son with the belt. But the question remains, where is dad? Now, was dad at work? Why didn't dad respond? It's your son. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I know I want to be there. You know, my son acting up. I got him. I got him. I got him. I got him. You go ahead and do your thing, babe. I got this. But I mean, I hear what you're saying, man. But I think that there is, when it comes to children, if the father's not there and the mother's trying to put it down, you can't say that the the absence of the father has no impact. That's ridiculous. Uh, It most certainly does. How could it not? How could it not? He ain't here trying to kick get something started. I see TNT's in the house. Good morning, TNT. Fast pitch is hilarious. She writes, <laughs> gay men voted John Legend in. That is hilarious. Uh, I ain't even think of that. See? I ain't even think of that. There is a clip right now of a brand new podcast called Cutting Through the Bull. It is after 9 a.m., hosted by Clue Magic and Fast Pitch. And uh, they break down current events. Uh, they break down some very serious issues. They get into relationships, uh, whatever's hot. And it's a brand new podcast. I want you to check. There's a clip right now on our Facebook page on Sin Digital Media. Check it out, like it and share it, and leave a comment and tell us what you think. Uh, Tanika Wright, stop hating on John Stevens, legend. Nate, I know it's people's LOL. I don't think he's sexy though. I mean, John Legend has he's got a great voice. Now, if somebody says sexiest voice, and again, I think that's for the women and the gay men to uh determine. You know, I, it's hard. For, I don't want to judge some other man and his sexiness. I have no standard on how to do that. So you tell me, you tell us what it is. You tell us what you think is sexy. I think that whole People's Magazine thing is like a paid for thing. Like John Legend must have some projects coming out. He's got a new album coming out. So a part of the promo package is, you know, can we get that People's Magazine sexy as alive? Because it's not that you really are. It's just you're on the cover. And I'm sure they can guarantee millions and millions of views. So I think that's all more of a promotional vehicle. Because if you notice, a lot of the men that, that get that honor have like projects out. Or they got a brand new movie coming out. And so it's just a part of the promotional thing. It don't mean you really are the sexiest man alive. It's just some shit that they call the sexiest man alive. And you can pay for it. I'm not even sure who owns People's Magazine. 
Because really, when I think about it, the entity that owns People's Magazine, I wonder if they're connected to John Legend and or this new project. Because if it is, they're like, hey, we can offer you various platforms to promote it. One is we got People's Magazine, John, for your new project. And that's how that works. I don't think it's a bunch of women that get together and say, you know what? Who is sexy in 2019? It's not that. That's business. That's called the business of entertainment. Gay men voted John Legend in. <laughs> Are gay men into John Legend? I don't know. Are there any gay men in the audience that want to say that? Feel free. Bunky writes, Donetta, matriarchy has destroyed the black community after the Section 8. See, there y'all go. And y'all gonna go with Donetta B with this, trying to get her started. Um, let me see here. Where he writes, Donetta, matriarchy has destroyed the black community after the Section 8 lead paint community bastard babies turn 18. What? <laughs> what? Lead paint bast- bastard babies? Oh, dear Lord. All right, let me go to the phones. Good morning. Welcome to the show. Hey, hold on one second, brother. Hold on one second. Hold on. Whoever's on the line, hold on one second for me. Cause I uh I gotta make sure that you're plugged in. Hold on one second. All right. Okay. Good morning. Welcome to the show. Hey, uh, brother. But I this is Chip down here in Dallas. What up, Chip? Hey, brother. I, I haven't been able to listen to you much uh, over the last month or so. But uh, I haven't heard uh, Black Lion going on. Yeah, he he ain't been on the show in a minute. Okay. All right. Yeah, we had to we had to sit him down, man. We had to give him a little time. So he's down right now. All right. Well, uh, shout out to the Black Lion. Much love to my brother. Oh, for sure. Uh, 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 when he's acting so, right. 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 I know. Hey. Uh. So I got a couple things since I haven't been on, uh, been able to listen in a while. But I've picked up here and there. Uh. Let's see. First thing is, I think y'all trying to. Sh- stir up the uh, complexion war in the black community by kind of disrespecting John Legend. Come on, y'all. Leave him alone. If if y'all were okay with Idris Elba, be okay with this brother. Because we all know that the whole thing is a farce anyway. The whole People magazine sexiest man alive. But I tell you what, his wallet is sexy. How about that? (laughs) Okay, I'm cool with that. He got a sexy wallet. That goes a long way for him and his family. But, you know, like I said, if that's what the women like, that's what the women like in 2019. I'm not mad at it. All right. Uh, another thing, uh, disrespecting black women. Uh, there's a gentleman, I'm not going to mention his name, because how are you going to disrespect a black female? And I'm not trying to get in the uh, black community or in, uh, with females. I've, I've been married to a black woman for 35 years, right? And she's a strong black woman. And she will take it to my son when he was growing up if he was getting out of line in school. I'm happy that some mother would go and take care of business with her son if he's acting up. We need more of that kind of thing rather than parents coming to school and getting on the teacher's case when everybody knows the child is wrong. That needs to stop. Uh, one more thing, I don't uh, want to talk about uh, the Kirk Franklin thing. I think I tried to send it to you on Facebook, and I don't know yeah. if, if you uh, recanted your your thing on Kirk Franklin. I know he can be irritating and get on your nerve, but uh, but his complaint was not that they cut him off at the awards ceremony. His complaint was when they replayed it on the Christian television show. They didn't play the part that he had uh, talked about as far as uh, racism and that kind of thing. Right, they cut it off. Uh, they cut it off at the end. They cut it off when they were when they were showing it on the other, uh, when they were just showing a clip of it, not showing the uh, show, but a clip of it. So, so the thing is, brothers like Kirk Franklin and LaCrae and other Christian, uh, black Christian artists, uh, gospel artists, who have crossed over are starting to say things about, you know, the issues in the African-American community, and they're getting a little uh, backlash from it. So while I don't 
necessarily like Kirk Franklin and his behavior all the time. He's making a good move here by speaking up. And he's got to give him a little credit for that. But and what I is he ske- that- what is he speaking up about though? They they cut off the clip, okay? But so in, how in, how in, long does it, my thing was okay? They playing a clip of your your thing, and you want to make a social movement, okay? Still, you want to make a, a a social statement? Lead with it. Lead yeah, with I mean, it. I that way they true. can't cut you off because you start with it. Yeah, that's that's true. But the, but give him credit for at least making that making that effort to make a stand but um, the, but the, but it was fake though it, it, but, but I, 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 I hear what you're saying but i'm not really sure where the complaint is his complaint is that in the so you know in the evangelical community and the white uh, christian uh they're trying to shove down they, they don't they play down the whole issue of you know police violence against African Americans, right? And uh, they don't they don't talk about it. They don't bring it up. They talk about supporting uh, you know officers and and the men that serve us, right? But they don't talk about the issue. And and Kurt was trying to bring it up. And so so on a different show, not on not when the thing was aired, right? But on a show that was showing a clip of his his you know, acceptance of his award, they cut off the part where he was trying to be socially responsible, right? They cut that off. And, and he's calling them out because they they, 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 they are they are so Trump, uh, they, they're so, so much supporting Trump that they're ignoring the real issues. And as believers, as Christians, one, we shouldn't be political. And two, we need them when when people are in need or people are hurting. We need to acknowledge it. And, and the white, uh, the evangelical church, Christians aren't doing that. You know, I can get down with that. I can I can get behind that. And listen, I said it up front. I bet you it wouldn't be too hard to look at some of the actions, motivations, things that the Dove Awards or whoever awards are doing. And, and find some things you don't like. I, I I get it, but so what's been happening with that man? That was two weeks ago. Is the boycott still going on? You know what? I don't know. Uh, and nobody knows because people just like man later for that. Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately. Yeah, I guess so. All right, so that's all I got for you. Hey, man, I appreciate it. Hey, love you, man. Yeah, thank you. Same to you, man. Take it easy. Appreciate the phone call. Yeah, good to hear from him. He says, look, man, get it right about Kurt Franklin. Brother Kurt's doing good work. (laughs) Okay. I stand corrected. He's doing good work then. We can keep it that way. Ain't nothing wrong with John Legend. Sexy is more than looks. Is that right? Bunky writes, John Legend has hips. <laughs> Mason Marler writes, is disrespectful. Hold on, we got John from Princeton, New Jersey in. Hold on, John. What's up, John? Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Nathan R.D. and the good people of St. Oh, oh, it's got some feedback feedback going on. I don't know what's going on with that. Wow. Uh, can you hear me? I can hear you. I don't hear any feedback. Oh. Okay, I'm. How's that? I, I switch ears. I tell you what, hang up, back. hang up, bouncing, and call me right back. back to me. Yeah, it's bouncing back. I'm gonna hang up on you, John, because it's bouncing back to me now. Hold on, I just got a text message from somebody. I'm finna call in on the next breakout. Alicia Reese threatening people with her firefighter boyfriend. F her and her daddy. See, there you go, Fame. Uh, good morning, John. Can you can you hear me now? Yes, I can. Okay, I'm still kind of getting the feedback. Still getting that feedback. We'll, mm. we'll just have to try this another day. No problem. Uh, John. Uh, John just hung up. <laughs> I think I fixed the issue, John, actually. Call me right back and let's see if it works, if you got time. If not, I appreciate you. 
Have a great day. John Levin's John Legend gets piggyback rides on his irritating wife. John's moist ass will make his gay debut before Christmas. Watch. That's bunky. Uh, Mason Marlon writes, that's why you vote your self-interest. Get a job and vote, lazy ass. Not sure he's speaking of. Tony writes, I think the soft black man is the trend of society. That's the only way I can figure John Legend. That would explain why mugs like Billy Porter. So people really got a problem with this John Legend thing, huh? Like I said, I don't take it too seriously. That's just what People Magazine says. Who gives a damn what they think is sexy? Again, that is a promotional vehicle. It's not like the real sexiest man alive. Like most recently, there was some study that came out that some supermodel is, by all scientific terms, the most beautiful woman in the world. Do you think she was a a woman of color? No, she wasn't. So, I mean, they still running that game on us about what's sexy and what's beautiful. That's why I won't let my kids watch that Frozen shit. No. Uh Uh-uh. I heavily monitor everything that they watch. I want to see what you watching. And I monitor it for its racial racial content, its cultural content. There's There's a lot of shit on Netflix your kids should not be watching. You know what I'm saying? Sitting over there thinking they're watching some benign cartoon. They're watching some plot, some propaganda plot to put some dumb stuff in your kid's head about themselves, that they're not beautiful. TNT writes, don't be hate on the musical genius. He's homegrown, Springfield, Ohio. We should be proud. But in typical Cincinnati fashion, you got people hating and having sucker attacks, shaking my head. And then she put up the emoji where like, the face palm to the face. <laughs> he is homegrown. That's a good thing. That's a good thing. Uh, again, I'll leave it up to the women. I don't really have a dog in this race. Whatever you think is sexy is what works for me. That works just with me. How many people think that this impeachment thing is going to end up the way the Democrats want it to end? With either Trump being impeached and then removed from office. Uh, or going through the process of being removed for office, which if he's in the process of being removed for office, why have an election, right? It's re- that would severely impact the election. Just, just imagine that for a second. Imagine Trump impeached, like literally removed in 2020. What do you think would happen? What do you think would happen? Would there be like a civil war? Would you see like some of these uh, race soldiers shed their disguises, step forward and form some type of an alliance, a confederate, form a a new confederacy? (laughs) Wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. Fast pitch writes, in many households like mine, it's easier for the mom to take off work and handle discipline in school and dad picks up, picks up at home. Fast pitch right, white gay man. That's funny. <laughs> that is hilarious. Uh, CG Dub writes, put your window up, caller. <laughs> he is better looking than Blake Shelton. I didn't see a revolt on that selection like people are doing for the homie. Blake Shelton? Oh, my God. What in the hell? I mean, listen, the one thing I've learned is that there is a man for every woman, a woman for every man. Somebody likes it, I'm sure. Blake Shelton, isn't he like the white country singer on one of those television shows? I mean, I guess. I mean, I'm not here to judge. Cam writes, what the hell is a sexy wallet? We are losing. We are lost as a people shaking my head. Yeah, he could have shaved that down. I mean, we can infer what he means to it. It would be a wallet that's got some some things that would make adults smile, like money, credit cards, Debit cards with actual large sums of money on it. Uh, a wallet that doesn't have bills in it. I think, it's, I think that's a sexy wallet. <laughs> TNT is going hard. She writes, John Lezen is conscious, all caps, an activist, all caps, all caps, charming, all caps, and a musical genius. Now, those aren't capped. 
No one can deny the many levels this man has achieved. I, I would agree. I think all those things are true. Uh, you did not put musical genius all caps, though, TNT. You did not. Is that Freudian? I don't know. <laughs> Bunky writes, John Legend has a boyfriend. No, John Legend has a wife and a child, and he's living his best life. Fame writes, back in the day, CGW, nigga firefighter named Jeff. What? What did I just read? Oh, dear Lord. When it's fame, you ain't no damn idea. Tracy writes, here we go with Spreaker. <sighs> damn, Spreaker. Tanika writes, it's because someone that looks like them disappointed or hurt them once upon a time and they're yet to heal. TNT goes to fame. She writes to fame. My son does look like him. Light skin, square hairline and dimples. And he is beautiful. He even won first place in a baby contest. I'll take the musical genius gene any day of the week. Fame writes. I hate generational idiots. I hate people who don't love themselves. What? Tanika writes. I am thoroughly convinced that some of us despise us. <laughs> Damn. Jesse writes, LOL, he has a boyfriend. No, he doesn't. That I know. Alicia Reese has a boyfriend, CG Dub writes. Does she? That's good for her. It's great for her. TNT writes, I got tired of the caps. If you're doing it on your phone, it is. You got to do like one or two more steps. Clue Magic writes, Jeff doesn't live in Cincy anymore, fame. You good, bro. Um, which Jeff are we talking of? I feel like I'm lost. I feel like I'm lost in a conversation here. Let me see where we are. We're at 10 a.m. And I mean, if y'all want to rock, we can rock. We really haven't even, we've really, really scratched the surface of what I prepared for. We haven't even really got into any Byron Allen audio and uh, kind of breaking down what would happen if Byron Allen loses. And essentially, it makes it more difficult for companies to sue based on discrimination. It would change the uh, the calculation, so to speak. And that's just a my just rudimentary way of putting it. If you've got a better way of breaking it down, please share. Please share. TNT writes Emmy, Grammy, Oscar, Tony. Um, uh, that's the resume of John Legend. I mean, John Legend is a. I mean, he's got some dope tracks now. John Legend has some dope tracks. We all know that. I have no problem with Don Legend. And I think I like his politics and what I can remember. I got no problem with him. So maybe they were saying sexy, as somebody said earlier, and it's not just your looks. Although I'm not here to judge John Legend. But I would agree. Sexy is more than that. Can be. Uh, Drop is connecting with Donnie B. He writes, plus, Donnie B., if the articles are sent to the Senate for presidential candidates... Four presidential candidates, Bernie, Warren, Kamala, Amy Klobuchar, will have to be seated during the entire impeachment trial in the Senate. Dumbass, desperate Democrats. Well, that just gives them a higher profile. That just gives them a higher profile. Like, we got to wait and see how this thing is going to turn out. Like, I told you my thoughts, but I'm a cynic. I'm a, I'm a black cynic. <laughs> and, you know what I'm saying? I, I, I just... I just don't think that I, I I struggle to understand how this is going to really, really impact um, the overall process. OK, in terms of thinking that he's actually going to be impeached and removed from office. So if they're not trying to completely remove him, maybe they're trying to wound him as he goes into the election against a Democrat challenger or challengers. I mean, that's got to be what the, what the play is. Now, will it work? I, I will. We'll find out together. We will find out together. Uh, at this point, it's any person's guess. I just don't know. I think it'll be great theater. People are going to get a lot of clips about it, a lot of plays. The media do its thing. The nightly television shows that, that feature politics, they're going to get a chance to talk about it. Podcasts like this one and others will talk about it. And uh, that'll be it. Fame rights. There's black women weighing 550 pounds talking about I'm thick. What? Um, this guy. TNT color struck walked her right into it. Uh, I see Fame here kicking up dust, huh? 
Uh, he finally found somebody to interact with him this morning. You could just tell he was in the mood to get, to just, just go there to just be a conceited bastard. All right. I just jumped aside the friends page. I want to see what people have posted. Uh, again, it is a closed Facebook group. And uh, you're more than welcome to join. All you got to do is knock on the door. Let me see here. Donald Trump is a result of white rage, not economic anxiety. Multiple teams interested in signing Colin Kaepernick. Great for him. We talked about Alicia Keys and her. Oh, my God. What is wrong with this woman? Woman, police handcuffed me while I was naked doing the wrong raid. I can believe it. Uh, did you see these thug life it's like a hoodie. It's all brown, like the skin, like brown skin of a black man. And it looks like it looks like the Tupac, like if you took Tupac's tattoos and made like a, a hoodie out of it, that's what it looks like. And <laughs> I don't want to see nobody wearing this shit. Thug Life, got the AK-50 there, all the Tupac. I mean, Tupac, man. Now everybody's tattooed up. There was a time when no one was tattooed. Now it's everywhere. Now it's everywhere. The leaked email shows St- Stephen Miller is exactly who you think he is. Is that right? Uh, teen sentenced to life in jail for choking sister over Wi-Fi password. What the hell? Hate crime numbers reach 20, hate crime murders reached 27 year high in 2018. So murders classified as hate crimes reached a nearly 30 year high in 2018. Why do you think hate crime murders? These are not just hate crimes, hate crime murders as being reported by CBS. Check that out. Um, let's see here. Supreme Court says relatives of Sandy Hook shooting victims can sue gun makers. Oh, where did I hear that before? Oh, yeah. You should be able to sue the gun manufacturers. Uh, DNA suggests a man is innocent of murder, but a U.S. state is going to execute him anyway. Um, and as I understand it, I mean, that's that's an older story. That's an older story. I think that brother, that was like a few years ago. I kind of remember that face here. Unfortunately, as you know, I, I'm against the death penalty. I'm going to get the death penalty across the board, even if it's the most heinous crime, even if the person commits it, even if they got indisputable evidence, they got it on videotape or whatever will be classified as indisputable evidence. It makes no difference. And the reason why is because it cheapens the life of every American citizen. I mean, if they can grab you off the street, charge you with a murder that you didn't even do, and then take your life under any rules, that can happen to anybody. Don't think it can't happen to you. You ever heard about Hurricane Ruben, Hurricane Carter? It is not uncommon. Soup up some people. Oh, you look like you fit the description. They beat your ass until you finally, or they torture you, or they deprive you of sleep and food and water, deprive you of the ability to go to the restroom, take your clothes from you, laying naked. People are crack, confess to anything. And that's what's happened in a lot of cases. Trumped up charges, overzealous prosecutors, clueless judges, all complicit in a conspiracy to send somebody to jail on some frivolous, made up, super small evidence. If one person is put to death by the death penalty, it ain't worth it. Who didn't deserve it, it ain't worth it. Even if the 10,000 people after that deserve it, if one person gets it and they didn't deserve it, we got to scrap the whole damn system. And you can't say that you you love, you believe in life and, and disagree with that. I mean, either we believe in life or we do not. To me, I believe in life. So what does that mean? That means that about we got to build jails for the people that really need to be there and stop filling up the jails with, you know, these minor crimes and trumped up charges. 
Uh, let's go back to the phone. John from Princeton, New Jersey. What's up? I think that was the problem Problem with my phone, my room, where I'm at. Um, the signal is bouncing back. When I come outside, it clears up. But anyway, good to hear from you. Your show's been doing pretty good um, as I get ready to migrate to Florida, where it's a warmer climate, um, and just getting over eye surgery in the right eye. And i got to do the left eye on Monday. So, choppers, I'm not going away. You're not getting rid of me that easy. You know, the flows are pretty good today. I was listening to you as you were talking about the impeachment. We'll get into that in a second. Choppers is nothing but a show. We'll get into that in a second. And we'll get into Trump realigning. Let me say it again. Trump realigning America. That's what this is all about. We'll get that to that in a second. But looking at Cap and where he's going to line up in the NFL, you know, Cincinnati should take a look at him. I think Atlanta, I think he's parading across the league trying to see, see which is a bit good fit for him. Uh, he better get bodyguards around him. Them players are going to come after him. The owners are going to say, go get him. Yes, uh, Cap, uh, you, you still, you've been preparing yourself for this. You did the fight. I'm happy you stood up and and steadfast to what you believed in. and made millions of dollars on that lawsuit, too. I'm not mad at you. But now he still wants to play. Well, he has the right. If he feels he can play and it's a team out there that wants him to play, well, I'm sure these owners don't want him to play. But he'll wind up wind up someplace either this before the season is out or maybe next year. Let's see how all this plays out. Uh, you know, they'll boo and everything else. Who cares? He's been paid rightfully. He knows what is expected of him going out there. You know, this is like Jackie Robinson all, all over again. Yes, Choppers, look up Jackie Robinson. Cap is doing the same thing. Somebody's got to take the fight, and why not take the fight to the enemy? So let's see how all of that plays out. You know, as I was listening to uh, the Mr. Lincoln Weir show last week, and I heard a caller call in, and they indicated that Mr. Nathan Ivey is throwing his hat in the ring. Is that city council or some other higher position that you're going to run for there in Cincinnati? I, I didn't hear that, but I believe they were talking about Cincinnati City Council. The city council, okay. Um, we will have to do, I won't get into the particulars, but one day me and you will sit down and talk because I don't want your enemies that are, you will be running against to hear what we have to talk about. It will benefit you for not for them, but the platform is what's important, what you're going to stand for. And we will talk about that another day. But if you feel you want to, you feel you can make a difference there in Cincinnati, I think you should do that. So you're having a ring. Is that going to affect you? If you do, would you have to get off the Internet? Are there FCC rules behind that? Or how does all that play out? Maybe you can no. educate us. Yeah, I could do both. There are no FCC rules. Okay, so you can still stay on the air and campaign at the same time. That doesn't affect you at all. You're not, uh, none of you are, uh, some of the city council people that you'll be running against. Hey, he has unfair. He, he, how can he uh, go on the internet? He, he's, he's building up. He's yeah, building but there's nothing stopping them from doing it either, right? No, nah, that's, I don't think there's any issue with that at all. Okay, well, that's good. That's good. But we will talk between now and a week and we'll see because I can maybe throw some insights into how you build your platform. I think I can bring a lot to the table. But All right, we'll cool. Talk about, we'll, we will we'll talk do. about that later on. And let's get to the Trumpster. All right, everybody's, you know, I would, <laughs> I laugh at this uh, circus, which is going to go on uh, for, from here until probably the convention. Uh, I can agree to disagree. You know, it's all a circus. It's all, uh, this is all brainwash. It's all brainwashed, getting people all rumped and upset and, and, and getting worked up over what? Nothing. You know, the Democrats, their hands are tied. Yes, they control the House. They can vote on it, impeach and all that. Yeah, we see where that's going. But where it's going is no place. 
because once it gets past the vote to impeach, it's not going to get past the rascally Republicans, which control the Senate. And even if it did get past the rascally Republicans, it won't get past the Supreme Court. So Trump will be there. They'll drag it out. Uh, uh, even if the Democrats vote to impeach, they'll drag. This will be dragged out to election, and Trump is sitting there laughing. But this is all coming down to one thing: the alignment of America. I'll say it again, shoppers. Trump is in there doing the bidding of the one percent, and that one percent tells him how to bounce the ball. And if he doesn't bounce the ball right, they take him out. Like every other president in this country's history, it's all about control. Control, and yes, keep the American people divided, yelling and screaming. Oh, the Russians are laughing at us, and other countries are laughing at us, too. It's all about the alignment, and that's what Trump went in. Remember some of the characters that was let go under Trump's earlier earlier years? Um, you know, these guys uh, uh, were in there to align and take America in a different direction. That's all this is about. This is not hard to figure out. You know, so we can get worked up. It means nothing. What I'm concerned about, I don't give a damn about the Republicans, and I don't give a damn about the Dixiecrats of the Democrats. What I care about is reparation. And black people, if you don't get behind reparation, hold whoever the candidate is for. I don't care who you vote for, Republican, Democrat. Let people get upset about that foolishness. But if you have an opportunity, the main platform for black people going into that 20 election and any of these character candidates coming to Cincinnati, you better put it to them. Reparation. I like to hear how you feel. Even your local council, even your people right there in Cincinnati, they should be put to task. If not, you're wasting your votes. You're flushing it down the toilet. You're not holding them accountable. I listen to some of you people there in Cincinnati. You complain about the local candidates you got. Hey, you put them in there, but you're not holding them accountable. So they get away with the foolishness until they come and pay for your votes like prostitutes. That's what they are, excuse me. <clears throat> so, you know, it's alignment, and that's what Trump has done. Trump told you what he was going to do when he was campaigning, it, and he's doing it. He's doing just what he wants to do. I'm not in agreement with his foolishness. I've been here in New, New York and New Jersey area. We know all about Trump. Smokescreen. He's like a genie in a bottle. Once you take him out, you can't put him back. He doesn't want to go back. I blame the media, too, for some of this foolishness. The media is a part of the mess. They build Trump up with that stupid reality show. He's a con. How long with the people that didn't vote? Okay, if you want to blame it on the 40 or 60 percent that didn't vote for Hillary and stayed home because they didn't like Hillary and they didn't like him. And that made the election very close. Now, you may say your uncle uh, saw what was coming down the pipeline. I saw what was coming down the pipeline, too. I told you Hillary is not a shoe-in. And people were telling me, shut up, shut up. You don't know what you're talking about. Don't you dare say that. I told you about Barack Obama. And he said, shut up, stop talking about Barack Obama. Now I hear the outcry about Barack Obama. He didn't do it. Hey, you put him in there. So let's get with, stick with the Trumpster. It's all about aligning America. That's what Trump is in there for. Redirecting America in a different way. Dirty, playing games with the Russians and anybody else he can pad his pocket and build up his corporation. Yeah, the Democrats may have the goods on him, but it's not going to happen. So let's just sit back, relax, take a deep breath. Hold hands, sing a kumaya, my lord, kumaya. Let's see how this circus plays out for the next couple of months. Have a nice day. All right, take it easy, John. I appreciate you, man. Finally got in. You didn't mention Pamela. I have not announced a run for council. He is referring to someone who called into Link Show and mentioned my name as a possible candidate. A well-wisher, a supporter, someone who thinks I would potentially make a good candidate. So I appreciate the love. That's two years away. We got a lot of time. Trust me. We got a lot of time. Uh, although, as I said, I mean, I'm already aware of more people who have announced uh, here locally for running for city council. And I think it's going to be one hell of a race. And I think it's going to be a race that has a huge impact 
uh, potentially, uh, not, not, not potentially, it will have a huge impact on, you know, governance for the next two years. I'll tell you what, though, I, I do, I, I, it is what it is. I mean, the will of the people is what it is. I do think the people were a little bit, um, their cynicism was used against them. Sometimes that's a very powerful tool to use against people, their own cynicism, right? And people had a lot of cynicism after Textgate. Uh, and that's why it was such a great political move maneuver or multi-layered. You know, people was kicking up dust about the text message. Remember all of this? That was all the rage. And uh, me and uh, Black Russia was going back and forth. And people was reading what they want to read into that. And uh, he was making, trying to make it seem like it was the biggest thing ever. And I could see the political, you know, maneuverings in it. And um, part of the impact of it, it was just so much negative press about city council that when people floated the idea and put it on the ballot that you go from four years to two year terms, it it passed. It passed because people use their cynicism about city council and all the chaos. Have you noticed? I'm seeing a lot more chaotic. You know, it seems like uh, the rhetoric that was going back and forth between, you know, different camps has kind of slowed down a bit. And uh, it's quite interesting. Like a lot, I don't know if black, how Black Russia was involved with all of that, and maybe it's just a coincidence. But when he went down, it all a lot of that chatter. It's still they still try to do that shit on Twitter, but it ain't the same. Uh, a lot of that chatter just ceased, and people should be very aware of the games that's being played. It's going to be a lot of games being played in 2020. Trust me, locally, regionally, nationally, it's going to be a lot of politics being played. Because we're about to do a major changeover on city council. So do I think the city council could be more effective with four years and two years? I think, yeah, I do. But do I also believe in the power of having elections every two years? Okay, great. Now we have an elections two years, every two years. Okay. I can see the answer to that as well. TNT writes, creepy. Ray writes, thanks for answering. As I said, when I make any announcements, I'm going to do it on this show first. You'll hear it here first. Trust me. Pat writes, uh, Zaro just don't get it. Smart dumb cat. Ray writes, what's amazing is in this room, some folks have real issues with those don't like that with those that think like them. It's that don't think like them. It's hilarious. Well, I mean, you know, I'm okay. I'll leave that alone. TNT writes, and the ones who wrote in Zaro, exactly. Who magic rice bless John's heart. He thinks he is reaching one, teaching one. Him so obvious, he is hilarious. <laughs> oh my god. Fame writes, it's a snack for snacks in Bunky. Oh, okay. I'll let y'all have that conversation there. TNT writes, is he still talking? Fame writes, Pam, did the inset law in West Virginia pass or not? Nathan, are you running for anything? I'm running backwards now. Fame writes, or TNT writes, Fame, I give you two thumbs down in my Dave Chappelle and Rick James voice. Pam writes, Drop never answers. He spews his vial knowingly. He's lying and sits back and watch what he says. He knows he is wrong. Just seeing how many he can lead in the wrong direction. Yeah, Drop knows he's wrong. He knows it. Nate, T- nah, TNT, I didn't really finish my comment. I meant to say, Wol- Wolves track prey for 500 miles. I will track you. What? I, I'm not reading that. Miss Tiffany writes, so Nate, so did Nate announce he was running? Now you already know. Mike writes, so you running, Nate? You already know. You'll hear it here first. What do I look like going somewhere else and telling somebody else before I, before I tell y'all? You're going to hear it on this show before I, anything else. Whatever I'm doing. Yeah, yeah, brother pal, brother pal. Yeah, he's a good brother. Appreciate it. He made that announcement. <laughs> uh, he did not run it past me, but I appreciate that, brother. TNT writes, Mo Wolf tickets from the Lonely Wolf. Who magic writes, John, sea salt, gargle with sea salt and warm water. That should help expel that hairball in your throat. Monkey writes, John got abducted. He did get abducted. He just disappeared at some point, came back. Uh, Mahler, what will the Democratic Duke Party do for black Americans? I'm asking for friends. Well, the Democratic Party is only going to do for black Americans what black Americans organize to make the Democrat Party do. Anything short of that is you're leaving it up to the whim of other people. 
TNT writes, fame mad because he's only nominated Lamest Wolf Alive. That's funny. Lamest Wolf Alive. Um, the drop writes, the circus is about to start. Get your popcorn, political junkies. Now, drop, are you going to be doing something on Twitter? Let me know. And um, I'm sorry, I'm, I can't remember who said something about a financial podcast. I would love to do a financial podcast. You know, the center for our community. I mean, as you'll see, the hosts that we're doing podcasts with are all people of color, black folks. I believe in the power. We believe in the power of black voices. We need more of it. Uh, black folks can never have too many good, good organizations, media outlets, people with good intentions. I am looking at a... I'm at the Pew Research Center. You ever go there? You should. It's a great source to get information and get some facts. Um, and um, sometimes they can provoke the conversation here from, from time to time. And we did discuss this back in April, but Race in America 2019. Most black adults have negative views about the country's racial progress. When asked if they believe that Trump has made race relations worse... 73% of black people said, yeah, only 49% of white people. When asked the question, the legacy of slavery affects the position of black people in American society today, a great deal or fair amount. Black people responded 84%. Whites, 58%. That's a big drop off there. When asked the question, our country has our country gone far enough in giving blacks equal rights with whites? 78% of black people uh, responded, um, no. Um, let me see, 37% of whites responded, no. There's a big gap there in perception. There's a big gap there in deception and perception. Black people and white people do not see things diff the same. A lot of them see things differently. Now, I mean, I know some white folks that, you know, at least on the surface, seem to be every bit as, I won't say woke, but as woke as anybody else. They know what's going on. And again, there were white folks that, you know, were part of the Underground Railroad, put their life on the line. Abolitionist, right? Put their family's life on the line. That needs to be recognized. Can't overlook it. Where are they today? A majority of U.S. adults say Trump has made race relations worse. And in that critical category, it's, it's, it's completely different as well. I mean, there were widely different responses. I'm looking at a study that was done, a survey that was done and conducted early this year by the Pew Research Center. And they are a source for information. You can check them out from time to time. From time to time, some of their stuff will make the news uh, as they're breaking down. Because what they do is they'll put out and talk to, like, through their sophisticated processes and, and try to get the public's viewpoint on different issues. Uh, Chase Rice, is it time for black people to infiltrate the Republican Party to make change from within? Yeah, it's been time. We need black Republicans. That's going to, you know, they, they, you know, maybe they really are Republicans for whatever reason, or they just jive with the Republican Party, but they they can't lose their conscience. Now, is that oxymoronic? I don't know. I don't know. Fame, uh, Clue Magic writes, nah, fame, I don't think he is washed. I guess we'll never know how washed if they continue to blackball him, right? Pamela writes, Nate, impeach and not removed is not a win for the Democrats, but they can just sit back and do their job and let him run rogue without repercussions. If that's the case, then why have any rules for a president at all? That's a great way. That's what the, the Democrats should say. Why, if we're not, is it, why have any rules at all if we're not going to you know, hold them to you? Because I think that's something that resonates with people because everybody's life is governed by rules. Rules on your job. Even if you're an entrepreneur, you still got rules, right? Your kids, there's rules everywhere around us. So I think people will resonate with that message. Hopefully the Democrats will do that. And I agree with you. Impeached and not removed. I mean, wasn't Bill Clinton reelected? Or was that was his second term? 
in which he got caught up with the nonsense because he had a girlfriend, lied about having a girlfriend, and that's what they say was perjury. And again, it was a fishing expedition. But that's politics. That's what it is. It's win or lose. So, Clue Magic writes, the Bengals won't do it. They are. I think I read that. I think I read that. So listen, I'm trying to get your last comments in. Um, said Nunez, never heard of him. Fame writes, F it. If Nathan runs, I'm running. Well, you should. You should. So Dick writes, if you run, Nate, you've got my support. Thank you so much. You know, I don't I don't anticipate anybody's support, even the choppers. I think it's something you have to earn. And uh, if I run for, for city council or whatever, uh, that's what I'm willing to do. But I haven't announced that. Um, Pat Rogers writes, Zara, that's, to me, that's a little bit ways off. Kind of. Kind of. Pat writes, Zaro, just don't get it. Smart dunk cat. I think I read that already. Mason Marler writes, preach, Nate. Fame writes, Lenny used to be witty about 10,000 calls ago. Your age is showing B. <laughs> CG, CGW writes, Monica was not a girlfriend. They stop it. She was a girlfriend. That was his little in-office White House girlfriend. You know what I'm saying? It was kicking it or whatever you want to call it. Yeah, that was his girlfriend. And I was never, as a man, I mean, how am I going to get mad because a man is, is with another woman? I don't know. That's what men do. I get it. I was never mad about him. I never had an issue with Monica Lewinsky. He should have just told the truth about it. Yeah. My issues was Clinton era policies that because he was a, a white Southern Democrat, people act like it didn't, it didn't really have an impact on the community. <clears throat> truth and sentencing. I mean, a lot of those lock them up, throw away the key, the crime bill, welfare reform, I mean, it was all kind of stuff that Clinton was doing that I had objected to. I was not a Clinton fan at all. At all. Because I'm looking at the policy and how it affects our community. Meanwhile, because he's a Democrat, everybody acted like, you know, he was like the chosen one. Uh, again, he's the first black president. Are you losing your mind? How? Because he's from the South? Because he got a Southern accent? That makes him black now? It was the it, it, it was it, it was the dumbest shit I ever heard in my entire life. I resisted it in every I'm still resisting it. The 20 year old flow. Fame writes, Fed's watching what's at what's at Bunky. Leave that app alone. Is that right? They are watching that app. They are. Because that's an app that's made uh by an outfit in Russia, correct? I think I read that article or saw it on TV or something. CG Dub, that was his girlfriend. And you can call it whatever you want to. That's a girlfriend. She was doing what girlfriends do, wasn't she? She's a girlfriend. Um, Fame writes, imagine being Monica Lewinsky, bringing Monica Lewinsky home to meet your family over the holidays and you introduce her as your girlfriend. Well, I mean, you know, I mean, every everybody's got a past. I mean, I don't know. I mean, you just hooking up with Monica Lewinsky now. You bring her home. I don't, she got a story to tell. It'll be very interesting at the dinner table. Very interesting. Okay, guys, here's what I like to do. I would like to do, okay, here's what I, here's the day I'm looking at. And you tell me what's a better day, Friday or Saturday. I'm looking at like one, two, three weeks away, first week in December. We do like a chop a holiday party. We all go somewhere. We drink, we eat, we chop it up. Uh, we meet and greet. I'm thinking the sixth or the seventh. Okay. That's three weeks from now. Hopefully that's after your your Thanksgiving, you came back, and it's before the holiday. Now, does that work? Or maybe um, the second week of December. But something so we can get it in before the holidays or doing the holidays and all get together because we're not promised to be here another day. We go into a black-owned bar, restaurant, and uh, we're going to eat wings and drink ale and enjoy each other's company. Okay? So... Does a Friday work or a Saturday work better for you? For me, I would say, hmm. I mean, you know, the last time we did it, we did it on a Sunday. We did it on a Sunday. And I don't think the Bengals are that big of a deal. So that's not going to spoil any, like, somebody's got to watch the game or something like that. You can watch the game anywhere. So I I'm thinking maybe a Sunday works for us mid-afternoon. 
Again, I'll put the word out on the friends page and my page. You tell me, but I like to do something, something, a quick turnaround, three weeks. I'll put out like a flyer and uh, we can fellowship. Tanika writes, I'm down. She says Friday. Um, let's see here. David Nunes is a clown who would be nowhere save for the fact that he's white. Is that right? Is that right? Uh, look into the drug trade. Clinton and Nike back in the day. Clinton and Nike? What in the hell? What is that? Clinton and Nike? I'm not sure what that is. Well, listen, folks, thank you for being here. I really appreciate it. I'll be back tomorrow morning, bright and early at 8 a.m., and we will chop it up on everything that's going on. So I'll leave you with the immortal words of Jay Electronica. Very simple. Respect the architect. Never text the Elohim. I'm Nathan Ivey. Thank you for being here. And I'm out.